Good afternoon and welcome to Championship Saturday here in Houston. Crescendo presented by Haas. We have made it to the Einstein playoffs. Are you excited? We are, I'm Blair, the first lead MC for first, and I'm here with my analyst, Rene Haro. Rene, good to see you again. Good to see you as well, Blair. We're gonna see some pretty amazing matches coming up here, and this year's game was really special. It was at speed, it had power, it had a lot of strategy too, didn't it? It did, you need strategy, you need to be in the flow, and you need really tough robots to make it. And well, we have the tough robots here. We're gonna see who's gonna rise at the top of the heap, but before we do that, Man, this is really a global organization. We have six countries represented. Australia is still in on Einstein. Canada is here. Israel. The Netherlands. Turkey. And 17 United States. Oklahoma, Texas, California, Missouri, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Hampshire, Illinois, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Arizona, Nevada, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Michigan. So we are well represented. Before we get to some of the matches, we need to, well, we need to recognize some teams. Earlier today, we, we presented the finalist awards for the first Impact Award, and we want to recognize those teams who are seated in the reserved seating in the stands. So let's, let's recognize Team 5614, Team Sycamore from Tel Aviv, Israel, Team 2486, the Coconuts from Flagstaff, Arizona, Team 6429, fourth dimension from Izmir, Turkey. Team 2438, Lobotics from Honolulu, Hawaii. Team 5985, Project Bucephalus from New South Wales, Australia. And Tech for Kids, Team 3990 from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So we've got some excited first impact finalists over there, but we also have some excited teams waiting to be introduced. So let's meet the teams. Introducing the winners of the Newton division. Captains 254 from San Jose, California, the Cheesy Boos. Their first pick, 1323 from Madera, California. It's Madtown Robotics. Their second pick, 294 from Redondo Beach, California, Beach Cities Robotics. And their third pick, 1189, Gross Point, Michigan, the Gearheads. The captains of Archimedes 4613 from Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, Barker Robotics. Their first 
Sports Fix 1678 Citrus Circuits from Davis, California. Their second pick, 4206 from Fort Worth, Texas, the Robo Vikes. Their final pick, 2718 from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Team OKC E Possums. The winners of the Galileo Division, Captains 2056 from Stony Creek, Ontario, OP Robotics. Their first pick, Team 987 from Las Vegas, Nevada, the High Rollers. Their second pick, Team 1577 from Ra'anana Hamarkaz, Israel, Steampunk. The final member of the Galileo winners, 7558 from North York, Ontario, Alt F4. Hopper Division winners, captained by 63-28 from Littleton, Massachusetts, Mechanical Advantage. Their first pick, Team 4481 from Eindhoven, North Brabant, Netherlands, Team Rembrandt. Their next partner, 9072 from Hanover, Maryland, the Tiger Bots. Rounding out the Hopper Alliance, 2370 from Rutland, Vermont, the I Bots. The champions of the Milstein Division. Captain 604 from San Jose, California, Quicksilver. Their first pick, rookies 9483 from Beshtikas, Istanbul, the Istanbul Wildcats. Their second pick, 1058 from Londonderry, New Hampshire. It's the PVC Pirates. And the final member of the Milstein Alliance, Team 78 from Newport, Rhode Island. It's Airstrike. The champions of the Curie Division, captains, Team 2590 from Robbinsville, New Jersey, it's Nemesis. Their first member, 4476 from Kingston, Ontario, Team Waffles. Their second pick, 
Team 7028 from St. Michael, Minnesota, Binary Battalion. The final member of the Curie Alliance, Team 190 from Worcester, Massachusetts, Gumpy and the Herd. The champions of the Johnson Division, Captains 58-13 from Concord, New Hampshire, Morpheus. Their first pick, Team 1477 from Conroe, Texas, Texas Tour. Their second pick, Team 3061 from Naperville, Illinois, Husky Robotics. The final member of the Johnson Division, 2582 from Lufkin, Texas, it's the Panther Bots. The winners of the Daily Division, the captain 1690 from Benjamina has upon Israel Orbit. Their first pick, Team 4522 from Sedalia, Missouri, Team Scream. Their second pick, Team 94-32, rookies from Phoenix, Arizona, it's Team 8-Bit. The final member of the Daily Division, Team 321, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Robo Lancers. We've got 32 excited teams ready to play this afternoon. And while they set up and we get our fields ready, well, there's a big campus here at the championship. And we've got a lot going on, not just on the field, but all over the place. So we want to check in with first CEO Chris Moore to give us a tour and catch us up on some of the awards happening all over the campus. Chris. First championship take 2024. excited to be here with you all today at FIRST Championship, celebrating our final day of competition. This week, we had more than a thousand teams from countries all over the world gathered under one roof, and we welcomed tens of thousands of supporters and spectators to cheer on these students as they put their innovation, teamwork, and robotic skills to the test. Every year, this event gets bigger and better. But one thing remains the same. It's a remarkable and life-changing experience for students of all ages. Not to mention, the competition is as fun, thrilling, and heart-pounding as any other sporting event. But our sport is the only one where every kid on every team can go pro. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to all the families, friends, and FIRST fans who have shown their support for all the amazing young people competing this week here in Houston and virtually. If you're new to the FIRST community and are interested in getting involved, please visit our website at www.firstinspires.org to learn about the teams and programs in your area. 
there's more excitement, discovery, and fun to be had during our upcoming season, which we'll be revealing towards the end of today's program. I'd also like to give a special thank you to our first championship presenting sponsor, BAE Systems, our first in show season presenting sponsor, Qualcomm, and the growing list of strategic partners, sponsors, and donors who have supported our teams this season. And thank you to the city of Houston and 1,400 first championship volunteers who came together to provide an inclusive, welcoming, and fun event for all. Finally, let's give it up for all the young people who have competed and presented here in Houston this week and to the 700,000 students around the world who participated in FIRST this school year. I know you'll all continue to hone your FIRST skills and nurture the connections you've made within the FIRST community. If you're graduating high school this year, don't worry. As FIRST alumni, you have a place in our FIRST community for life. Next, I'm proud to introduce the winner of the 2024 FIRST Championship Sponsor Video Contest. Thank you to all of our amazing sponsors for participating. Please join me in congratulating Caterpillar, the winner of this year's friendly competition. Roll the video. It's amazing to go from an empty file to, you know, 700 lines and just seeing everything work and seeing it play out on the field in a glorious way. Going from toying with Arduinos and microcontrollers that cost less than $5 to working on industry-level tech is just a mind blower that I couldn't achieve anywhere else except here and first, and that's thanks to Caterpillar and everything that they've given to our team. I worked at the Mossville Caterpillar Complex, and I worked on site communications validation. I worked on software that tested the antennas on the machine, as well as servers that were actually on our testing sites that would listen for communication from the trucks. Seeing what we do at Caterpillar and seeing how every system works harmoniously with each other, just the same way we do it on the robots here at first, is beautiful. And it really gives me a new appreciation for what I do here and to do in my career in order to help operate these huge machines. We're so grateful for BAE Systems' generous support of the 2024 FIRST Championship as presenting sponsor. BAE Systems has supported FERS for more than 25 years, and we're proud to work alongside them to expand access to STEM education and prepare young people for the workforce of tomorrow. With that, please enjoy this video from BAE Systems. Imagine a world without direction. A place where destinations cannot be traversed. And exploring beyond our boundaries is no longer achievable. But you are the next generation of problem solvers, ensuring this doesn't become reality. To lead the world and sustain the future of innovation, we need more dreamers and creators like you. For decades, BAE Systems and FIRST have worked together to inspire the next generation of STEM innovators, ensuring you have the opportunity to explore, learn, and achieve to develop unique problem-solving skills, building the confidence to make the impossible possible. You are the key to bringing all this to life, developing technology that hasn't even been dreamed of yet. Together, we're cultivating the future and building a world that you believe in. And now it's time to celebrate one of our deserving mentors with the Woody Flowers Award. To present the Woody Flowers Award, please welcome Christine Sapio, Mark Buckner, and Dan Green, along with the previous award winners. Welcome to the Woody Flowers Award presentation. I'm Dan Green from Team 111 Wild Staying and Team 112 Plus One. I was honored to win this award in 2007. 
We've got a question we want to pose to you. What is the magic that makes FIRST so unique and the great success that it is? I'll tell you, the secret sauce is the mentors and the interactions between you, the students, and the mentors. Woody Flowers understood this. That is why we are here to give such an important award out. That is why we're here. We can't ever lose sight of this. I just want to say this one more time. The mentors are the secret sauce. Let's hear it for the mentors. Okay, one mentor is chosen to be a WFA each year. Dr. William P. Murphy, Jr., who we lost a few months ago, shortly after his 100th birthday, started this award to honor Woody Flowers' exemplary communication skills in 1996, when Woody was the first recipient of this award. This is the 29th time that one mentor has been chosen who embodies the ideals of mentorship and gracious professionalism modeled by Woody. We are all the recipients of this award over the years, and you may notice the shirts that we're all wearing. These, these are actually Woody shirts. It's a great honor for us to be able to wear these shirts, and it's actually quite emotional for us since his passing. Woody had a tradition of wearing a shirt like these each year, and he asked all of you folks to sign it at the competitions. That's why we started the tradition of signing shirts at the regionals and district events to give to the Woody Flowers finalist award winners at these events. And it's a great tradition, and we encourage you to sign them when you're at your events next year. Now, this year's award is going to be presented by the winners, the two winners of it from the past two years. So now I want to introduce Christine Sapio from Team 2486, the Coconuts, as we continue the WFA presentation. Good afternoon, first championship. I'm Christine Sapio, and I was honored and humbled to receive the Woody Flowers Award in 2022. This award is named after a great man. Dr. Woody Flowers is the father of competitive robotics. The principles he established in his robotics design course at MIT laid the foundation for all robotics programs that have followed, especially FIRST. Woody breathed life into the FIRST robotics competition and set the guiding principles for the program of gracious professionalism and cooperation. And those are ideals we all strive for. Mentors are the guiding light of FIRST and are entrusted not only with teaching extensive technical skills, but also helping students to become the best version of themselves. Because of their mentors, FIRST students learn to treat others with respect, kindness, compassion, and empathy, and to cultivate a passion for service. The dedication of the FIRST mentors worldwide have collectively transformed the lives of thousands of students. What you do matters. So how about a huge thank you to all of our first mentors for everything you do. On behalf of the Woody Flowers Award winners, I would also like to congratulate the 2024 Woody Flowers Finalist Award recipients on receiving this honor and continuing to work to fulfill Woody's legacy. I would now like to turn it over to Mark Buckner from Team 4265, Secret City Wildbots, who's going to announce the 2024 First Robotics Competition Woody Flowers Award. Thanks, Christine. Well, I'm Mark Buckner, and I was honored with the 2023 Woody Flowers Award. But now I have the double honor of revealing this year's winner. So are you ready? All right. So here's what the students had to say about this year's Woody Flowers Award recipient. 
This mentor's unmatched dedication and positive attitude is exemplified in his philosophy that robotics isn't about winning, but about learning, inspiring, and showing respect. This mentor is seen by other mentors as a true, gracious professional. Defined by his compassionate guidance and success in making a human connection with everyone. This mentor is dedicated to improving the entire FIRST community and has been an invaluable lifeline for numerous rookie FRC teams through a virtual program that provides resources from veteran teams to help rookie teams become sustainable. A mentor of mentors, this coach has shared untold breadth and depth of knowledge with hundreds of other mentors via conference presentations. This coach's team speaks highly of his Socratic mentoring style and his ability to allow students to take ownership of their projects, empowering, empowering them to build competitive robots and transform STEM through their outreach. Although his influence has reached thousands of students and FRC teams across the country, what this team appreciates most... <laughs> wait a minute, you couldn't... <laughs> is his ability to spark that passion for FIRST in others. Through it all, he reminds his students that their priorities should be health, then family, then school, then robotics. So please join us in congratulating the 2024 Woody Flowers Award winner, Norman Morgan, from Team 2468, Team Appreciate. Congratulations, Coach. Congratulations, Norm. Well deserved. Also well deserved are our finalists for the first Impact Award. And they've communicated their impact and their reach around the globe with their submission videos. So now let's check out the first video from Team 5614, Team Sycamore from Tel Aviv, Israel. People ask to explain what the word impact means ask you to imagine. In 
Imagine having the ability to impact thousands of people. The power to deeply affect the lives of others lies within every one of us. All we need is to imagine. Imagination is the beginning of creation. Imagine a world where science and technology are accessible to every child on Earth. Spreading FIRST vision by starting and mentoring more than 60 robotics teams from all of FIRST programs, including Echo and Discover. Imagine following the motto, learn by doing, lead by teaching, and to lecture at FIRST conferences and assist other FIRST teams. Imagine how significant your impact can be in shaping the future generations. Reaching kindergartens, schools, welfare daycare, libraries and festivals with our outreach activities in order to inspire the young generation to become STEAM leaders. Imagine opening doors for kids with special needs and exposing them for the first time to the world of science and technology. Creating accessible STEAM activities in order to reach more than 700 people who have developmental delay or ASD. Imagine you have the ability to bridge the gap between people from different backgrounds and sectors. Reaching low socioeconomic standards, hospitals, and senior clubs made us realize that robotics can unify different communities. Imagine that even during a national crisis, you can bring a smile to a child, supporting more than 500 evacuated civilians from two of Israel's edges providing interactive online STEAM lectures, and establishing a learning center to more than 2,800 children who had to stay safe at home. Standing here now, 10 years after Team Sikamo was established, and seeing what once we could only imagine, makes us realize that hard work and effort makes goals achievable. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. Remember, imagination is the basis of impact. Nicely done, Sigmore. Well, it's time to start some matches, but before we do, we've got some uh, very interesting data for you. Guess how many notes were scored in the qualification matches? Make a guess. Rene has the answer. Rene? Yeah, thanks to our friends over at the Blue Alliance. 34,403 across qualifications and playoffs, all divisions. And you actually have the stats for how many notes were scored by Archimedes is playing Newton in the playoffs. Give us the numbers. Really, really close. 490 for Archimedes, 491 for Newton. <laughs> All right, we're going to send it over to the mass field. We have Adam and Brittany, our MCs, and Rachel on the game announce. Take it away. Good afternoon, FIRST Robotics. Welcome to the Einstein playoffs. We begin here on mass. 181 qualifying events, eight divisional playoffs. All leading down to this one moment, we have one question left. Are you ready? If you are ready for the 2024 championship playoffs, let me hear you make some noise! Then we begin here in the upper bracket, match one, round one. We have our Archimedes champions in red, Newton in blue. Brittany, please introduce the winning Archimedes Alliance. Thank you very much, Adam. So we're, like he said, we're going to head on over to this Red Alliance. We're going to start things off with our Alliance captains, our 20, 2021 Hall of Fame. Let's hear it for Team 4613. From Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, give it up for the Barker Redbacks. And joining them, we have the Amarillo District Texas Champions. We have Team 4206. From Fort Worth, Texas, it's the Robo Vikes. And our final team joining them on this Red Alliance, we have our 2015 World Champions, Team 1678. From Davis, California, it's the Citrus 
circuits. And give it up for the Red Alliance's fourth partner from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Team 2718, Team OKC E Possums. And now sending it over to Adam to meet our Blue Alliance. All right, thank you, Brittany. Here we come over to Newton. Now, amongst these teams, there are a couple world champions. Yeah, there's a lot here. There's a lot of history between all of these teams on the field, all hailing from California right now. And honestly, they don't need an introduction, but we're gonna give it to them anyway. 2004 Hall of Fame Team 254. From San Jose, California, it's the Cheesy Poos. I talked about world champions. And you know what these guys are? Defending world champions. And they wanna make it two in a row this year, 13-23. From Madera, California, it's Madtown Robotics. And these folks, they know a thing or two about world championships. It's been a little bit, 2010 being the last one, but they want to make 2024 one for the record books, 294. From Redondo Beach, California, it's Beach City's Robotics. And give it up for the Blue Alliance's fourth partner from Gross Point, Michigan, Team 1189 Gearheads. If you are supporting our Archimedes champs in red, make some noise. If you are supporting our Newton champs in blue, make some noise. Well, here we go. In the honor of one of the greatest robotics announcers to ever grace this sport, Mark Leone. This is why we do the math. Now it's time to save the world. Drivers behind the lines in three. Two, one, crescendo! We're off for match one. Red Alliance getting the first note into their speaker. All of the notes from the midfield are gone. Over on blue, Madtown Robotics making in a shot. Cheesy Poe poofs with some more. The blue Alliance scored seven, eight notes during that autonomous period, giving them a five point lead as we shift into Teleop. Madtown Robotics already filling their role of shuttler for Blue, getting notes from the source and passing them over to the Cheesy Poofs who are eagerly awaiting them and prepping the Blue Alliance speaker for amplification. They're ready, but they took a moment to play defense for a moment, trying to slow down the Red Alliance. Blue speaker is amplified, so is Red's. 1678 making a shot for the Red Alliance, while Cheesy Poof slipped in two more for the amplified speaker on Blue. We've got a minute and 35 seconds remaining in this match. Newton is up 69 to Archimedes 54. 4206 playing defense on Madtown, trying to make it more difficult for them to pass notes over to their partners. Meanwhile, 4206's partner, 4613, Barker Redbacks slinging in a shot to the Red Alliance speaker. Citrus Circuits right behind them. Unfortunately, Citrus Circuits missed their shot, but they've got a strong intake, picking up another note and dumping it into the amp for the Red Alliance. Newton has maintained a lead over Archimedes for this match. They're up by almost 30 points with 50 seconds remaining. 294 Beach City, Beach City Robotics playing defense on 4206. Meanwhile, 254 is shooting up the Blue Alliance speaker and heading to the middle of the field to grab another note. They're getting the Blue Alliance speaker ready for another round of amplification with 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Madtown Robotics trying to keep Cheesy Poops fed, passing over note after note, even up against defense from Robobikes. Blue Alliance is amplified, so is Red. Citrus Circuits getting in a five-pointer for the Red Alliance, but Newton is still up by 30 points with 10 seconds remaining. All three Red Robots are getting lined up. Blue is up 13-23 with a trap scored for Blue. Two, one. Right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. 
108. It was the speaker right score that set Newton apart during right that here. match. Congratulations right to our winning Newton Alliance, right who's going to continue on in the right upper now. bracket. We'll see them again right in round two, right match now. seven. Right Archimedes right is not done yet, though. They're going to be moving on in the lower bracket. We'll see them compete again in round two, match number five. And now we're ready to send it over to Energy for our next match. All right, first match of our double elimination tournament. Exciting stuff going on over there on Mass. But now we're going to send it to Energy, where we have two more fields waiting. This is Galileo versus Hopper with our MCs, Samantha and JoJo, and our game announcer, Josh. Take it away. I think we're doing all right, Sam. How are you doing, Einstein? There you go. Much better. Oh, welcome, welcome to... The Energy Field. We'll be hosting you right here for match number two, so why don't we start introducing these amazing teams? Let's go ahead, you got the Red Alliance. You got Blue Alliance, so right here on the Red Alliance, they are the winners of the Galileo division. Right on the first spot, they, just this season, they got five blue banners, but they are a 49-time winners in 17 years. It is team 2056. From Stony Creek, Ontario, OP Robotics. Accompanying them to ensure that they can get the victory for this season. They got one blue banner this season right in their field, but they are a 19-year-old experienced team who are looking to make it world champions. It is team 7558. From North York, Ontario, Alt F4. And this last spot on the Red Alliance taken over by a team who are not only Hall of Famers, but they are 30-time winners in 22 years. Our 2007 Houston champs, it is team 987. From Las Vegas, Nevada, High Rollers. And the fourth member of this alliance, Team 1577 from Ra'ana'an, Israel, Steampunk. And over with the Blue Alliance, We've got the winning team from Hopper, sponsored by Molex. We have team 4481 from the Netherlands. They're from Eindhoven in the Netherlands, team Rembrandt. Their rookie year was 2013, and their 2024 schedule, uh, score was, uh, their, their, I'm sorry, their 2024 record was 37, eight and zero. Oh. Next, we have, in the center, Team 9072. From Hanover, Maryland, Tiger Box. And rounding out the Hopper group, it is Team 6328. They're from Littleton, Massachusetts, Mechanical Advantage. And their fourth member of the Alliance, Team 2370 from Rutland, Vermont, iBots.
best robots in all of competition robotics here on display on Einstein in our first 15 seconds of this match, a showdown of some of the top programmers in all of competition robotics. Five seconds left in Autonomous, your score still tied. 36 points to a side, Galileo with a last minute. Speaker note brings him up to a five point advantage. 41 to 36, and now drivers take the helm of all six of these machines. A flurry of strategies have been employed by our alliances so far here at the first championship, and it looks like this one will take the form of two machines passing for each alliance from their source down to a designated scorer in the corner of each field. Those scorers, in this case, high rollers for the Red Alliance, the 987 machine you see, and for the Blue Alliance, Team Rembrandt's over in the corner by the Blue Alliance amp. Four points separate your alliances. Right now, no speakers amplified. Red Alliance changes that with high rollers ready to pick up five points per note scored in the upper goal. Two of them good so far. They've got time for another. OP Robotics takes the honors. That 2056 machine then races back across the field and is ready to grab more notes from their source at the top right of the field. Just two points separate your alliances. Blue Alliance now on the move, employing some varied passing strategies with one machine, 9072, passing to the bottom of the field. And their Alliance partner's mechanical advantage generally passing over the stage. That blue speaker is now amplified. That'll allow Team Rembrandt to scoop up five points per note scored, bringing them back to within one point of the lead briefly. And Galileo strikes back, jumping ahead with several notes scored, both in their one-point amp and in their two-point unamplified speaker and around and around we'll go. 28 notes scored for red, 27 notes for blue, absolutely still anyone's game. Here's the one-two punch of the Blue Alliance. That was Rembrandt's in mechanical advantage, picking up 10 points on the cycle. Rembrandt's five more, bringing the score up to 130 now, and they're right back at it to the one-point amp. Any note they find in quick fashion, getting scored. OP runs across the field, tests the structural integrity of our diamond plate walls, and then runs back to the Red Alliance source, top right of your field, spins around, and wants to find a path around the red stage. We're in our final 20 seconds of the match, our end game. Teams now looking to find a way up onto the stage. Red Alliance already with a bot airborne. That's gonna be Alt F4 picking up three points for the Red Alliance. Their partners, High Rollers, do the same. And only a half mirror on the blue side with mechanical advantage up for three. We'll take a quick pause to get a final score for match number two in just a moment. Your results are in for our first match here on the energy field. It's gonna be the Blue Alliance. Staying in that upper bracket there, that is the Hopper division, 165 to 152. We'll see more of Hopper in the upper bracket, round two, match seven in a little while, and Galileo a little bit sooner, they'll move to the lower bracket and we'll see them again in match five. We'll kick it back to Blair and Renee. Well, there's a lot of excitement on the field, in the stands, and luckily we've got a field reporter, Grace, standing by one of the field. Grace, take it away. Hello, sorry, my name is Grace Rosenbaum. I am so excited to be the field reporter today on Einstein. We have 32 incredible teams with us at this competition. I'm looking forward to bringing you their amazing stories. None of them are the same. We have unique stories from every single team here, and I'm excited to have you meet our students on all 32 from our eight divisions. Let's throw it back over to the mass field to meet our teams in our next match. All right, thank you very much, Grace. We come back to mass four, match number three. In red, we have our Curie champions. In blue, we have our Milstein champions. So let's meet your Red Alliance first, your Curie champions. First up, this team is no stranger to Einstein. This is their third 
This year, they have a first impact award. So the team is great and the machine is even better. Give it up for 2590. From Robbinsville, New Jersey, it's Nemesis. In the center, we have a regional winner here, Granite City in Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken, Team 7028. From St. Michael, Minnesota, it's the Binary Battalion. And completing this alliance at their district championship up in the Great White North, they were finalists, but they don't want to be finalists anymore. They have their Curie Division win, and they want to go all the way here, 44-76. From Kingston, Ontario, Canada, it's Waffles. Oh. And Curie's fourth partner from Worcester, Massachusetts. Give it up for Team 190, Gompe and the Herd. All right, Brittany, let's meet our Blue Alliance. Thank you very much, Adam. So as he said, we're going to head on over here. We're going to have our Milstein teams, our champions from that division. We're going to start things off with Team that has two regional wins. They were division win their rookie year. Let's hear it for team 94-83. From Besiktas, Istanbul, Turkey, it's the Istanbul Wildcats. And in this middle section, in this blue alliance, we have our alliance captains. We have the Sacramento Regional Champions. We have the Monterey Bay Regional Champions and making their fourth appearance on Einstein. Let's hear it for team 604. From San Jose, California, it's Quicksilver. And rounding out this Blue Alliance, we have our BSU District New England Champions. We have their last appearance here on Einstein in 2011. Let's hear it for our last team on this Blue Alliance, Team 78. From Newport, Rhode Island, give it up for Air Strike. The fourth robot on the Blue Alliance from Londonderry, New Hampshire, Team 1058, the BBC Pirates. All right, are you guys ready to see this match kick off? How about that Red Alliance? Maybe? All right, Blue Alliance. And that's a thumbs up though, so we got those drivers behind the lines. In three, two, one, crescendo! Match three has begun. Red Alliance making some early notes into their speaker. Quicksilver and Binary Battalion fighting over a note in the center of the field. Quicksilver got it for the Blue Alliance. They've been able to score four notes in their speaker so far. Red beat them in auto mode though, earning 30 points to Blue's 26. That's gonna give Kiri an advantage coming in at Teleop. Waffles starting strong, adding a note to the Red Alliance amp while their two partners continue their double feeding strategy. Both Nemesis and Binary Battalion passing over notes to their partner who's amplified their speaker and adding another note for the Red Alliance. That's gonna be five, make it 10 more points for Red thanks to that speaker amplification. On the blue side of the field, they're also running a double feeder strategy where Quicksilver and Airstrike are passing over notes to the Istanbul Wildcats who have placed them into the amp and have now amplified the Blue Alliance speaker. Wildcats shot a note into the amp. That's gonna be five more points for the Milstein teams. They're up 72 now to Curie's 56 with a minute and 15 seconds remaining in this match. Both alliances have their speakers amplified. Waffles adding a note for the Red Alliance over on Blue. The Wildcats and Quicksilver both making a note worth five points each for the Blue Alliance. That's gonna help Blue extend their lead. They've maintained an advantage over Curie this entire match, and they know they need to keep that momentum up. Blue Alliance has amplified their speaker again. 604 just missing a shot, but 9483 making it in, rebounding, and heading over to add another note to the amp. 
40 seconds remaining. Milstein is in the triple digits, up 110 to Curie's 95. Waffles isn't done yet, though. They just shot an amplified note into the Red Alliance speaker and another. Binary Battalion also added one. Waffles back with another and Nemesis as well. A huge amplification period for the Red Alliance. 15 seconds remaining, only seven points separating these two alliances. Potentially a spot lit hang on red if one of the Red Alliance bots gets on stage on center stage. Five seconds remaining, Nemesis is up for red. Two, one. We've got our results from match three for you on the screen, on the mass field. That's going to the Blue Alliance, winning with a score of 148 to Reds 138 during that matchup. The Milstein crew just scored more in the speaker during that match, giving them the win. Our Milstein Alliance will be advancing in the upper bracket, and we'll see them again during round two at match number eight. The Curie Alliance is not done yet. They are gonna be moving to the lower bracket. We'll see them compete again in round number two, match six. Great showing by our blue Milstein Alliance. Congratulations, and we're gonna send it back over to the energy field for our next match. Welcome back to Energy Field. How are we feeling about that match we just watched? Wasn't that insane? But let me right now introduce you to the teams who will be competing on the red side of the field for this match. They are representing the Dally Field on the first spot. They got their first blue banner right here this season, but they are 10-time Impact Award winners in 25 years. Team 321. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Robo Lancers. And accompanying them on this adventure with two blue banners this season. They are an 11-year team. With eight, they are eight-time winners. It is Team 4522. From Sedalia, Missouri, Team Scream. And on this last spot, we got our Alliance captains. They got four blue banners just this season. And in 19 years, they have been 17 time winners. Let's give it up for team 1690. From Benjamina, Israel, Orbit. And their fourth Alliance member is team 9432 from Anthem, Arizona, team 8-Bit. And over here with the Blue Alliance, we have the teams representing Johnson Field, starting with Team 5813. From Concord, New Hampshire, Morpheus. In the center, we have Team 1477. They're from Conroe, Texas, Texas Torque. And make it loud for Team 3061. From Naperville, Illinois, Husky Robotics. Their fourth Alliance member, Team 2582 from Lufkin, Texas. Let's hear it for the Panther Bots.
match here on Energy begins as they all do with 15 fully pre-programmed instructions. We have just one note left in the center of the field. Will Husky find it? Yes, they do. That's the 3061 bot from the Johnson division. And they convert it into five points of Alliance score. Five of the 10 that the Johnson division now leads over daily as drivers take the control. Immediately, Texas Torque into red territory. First to jostle the red robots in front of the subwoofer, but then off to the blue source they go to continue the passing strategy they perfected during Johnson division playoffs. They'll pass along to Morpheus, the Alliance captain, 53, or 58 13, rather, right in front of that amplified speaker and they tie the game back up at 53. Daly was ahead for a brief moment, and it'll be a back and forth race the whole way. 3-2-1 machine, Robo Lancers parked right in front of Texas Torque there, slowing that cycle to a crawl. They'll have to call in the pick and roll from the Alliance partner there. That's going to be Husky Robotics able to get a note after Robo Lancers back off for a moment. And the other Red Alliance machine you see on the left side of the field is that of Orbit, a notoriously fast and tiny beast of a machine that will outscore you in a blink if you let it. They're up by six points right now with a minute and 15 left to play over there on the Red Alliance side of the field. Orbit doing their laps. They're running notes all by themselves. They are not bothering with passing right now, whereas most of our other alliances have been. Note up and over the stage actually gets intercepted there by the 5813 Morpheus machine. They convert it into the amplified speaker for five points. Another Blue Alliance robot rolls in. Texas Torque for five more. The Alliance trailing now by a bit, but they have plenty of time to change that. 42 seconds left to play. The Red Alliance with 23 notes scored between their amp and their speaker. They've also perfected the art over here of waiting just enough to amplify that speaker that the note is closest to the sensor to maximize the amount of time that that speaker will be amplified. Robo Lancers fighting their way through. They'd like to find a parking spot. They got to chase Paperville's team out of the way first. Up. Onto the stage we go already. Team Scream and Scream for that trap note. They just converted into five points of Red Alliance score. And now the human players take their chances to spotlight these robots. No dice for the Red Alliance. Blue Alliance still working on it with three robots up in the air. Two of them on a single chain for a harmony bonus. That's eight points stage right, three points stage left for Blue. And now another trio climb plus the trap note over here on Red. Will be plenty to tally up. We'll get a final score to you shortly. Results are in for our fourth match here during the playoffs. The Red Alliance, the Daily Division. We'll continue along in the upper bracket there with that win. 126 to 95, your final score. And so Daily will go on to play against Milstein in match number eight. And Johnson will move into the lower bracket and they'll go on to play against Curie in match number six. Blair and Renee, back to you. All right, we've seen four matches and we've seen a smorgasbord of strategy. What did you see? Well, Blair, they say defense wins championships. And in the two cases, Newton and Daly, which we just saw, defense is what made the difference. Also, so many penalties this year. There's penalty-free matches going on here too, right? That was just great. It's interesting to see because defense so close to the source zones, particularly in those protected areas, are very, very, very careful. You have to be very careful. These teams have made it through the playoffs and they know where their limits are, where to hold the teams if need be. Let's check the bracket after round one. So we've got teams in the upper bracket and teams in the lower bracket. Not eliminated yet, that's just one loss. But we're going to let the teams set up. Get ready for match nine and 10, excuse me, five, six, seven, and eight. And check in once again with Chris, who's uh, got some special guests, a presentation, and a recap around the campus. It is my great pleasure 
to introduce our next segment, the presentation of the Founders Award. Each year, first founder, Dean Kamen, presents the Founders Award to one organization or individual for exceptional service in advancing the ideals and mission of FIRST. This year, the Founders Award goes to a former NASA engineer who spent years working on the Curiosity rover. He is also the founder of Crunch Labs, a company dedicated to showing kids how to think like engineers. You probably know him best from YouTube where he does exciting science experiments, hilarious pranks, and develops awe-inspiring inventions for his nearly 50 million subscribers. While his amazing feats of STEM have certainly earned him a lot of fans from all over the world, he visited FIRST Championship this week because he is a fan of all of you, and he is passionate about sharing FIRST with his incredible following. Let's take a look at the moment when Dean presented this year's Founders Award to Mark Rober. This really is a special day for FIRST. Each year we'd present the Founders Award. It's a clock that I made nearly 30 years ago, and it travels once a year to the next recipient. It's got little insignias on it from each of the ones that have won it in the past. It, it was won twice by a little organization called NASA. I heard of them. I know you're very familiar, <laughs> worked there for many years, and they're one of our great sponsors to this day. But you have been so visible on the internet with 50 million followers. You've been so dedicated to getting kids to see the accessibility and excitement of technology in a kind of a fun way. You seem like the perfect extension of FIRST. And as the founder, I get to find an individual, a company, a federal agency that has done so much that we want to recognize them among the whole FIRST community. But the reason I also made it a clock is they're going to get it and hopefully put it on display prominently in their headquarters yep. somewhere, but they're going to watch time move along very quickly. I really do think we are sort of kindred spirits in, you know, my goal is to reach as many brains as possible to get them stoked about science and engineering and education. And, you know, I've had nephews who they've all gone through school. They've taken the classes. But I swear where they learn the most is like doing first, you know, Lego League, including like through high school. And I was just so impressed by that, that I started researching you guys to figure out like, how do I put the thumb on the scale here, right? Like, you know, on the channel, we could tap a microphone and reach, I think it's like 400 million eyeballs a month, right? Well, technically 800 million, because everyone has two <laughs> eyeballs. And so it's like, kind of combining powers here to let more people know about first and real learning in the trenches that can occur like because that's where the learning happens it's in the trenches and you guys do that I think better than anyone first was all about giving kids real access to real engineering issues real engineering resources and let them build something that solves a problem and when we saw how fantastically well you're doing that at crunch labs this is a perfect marriage. Well, and as part of this, we're kind of announcing we are raising money. When people buy Crunch Labs box, they can donate a box. We're going out to people. Crunch Labs themselves is raising money. And then through FIRST, we're actually getting those into the hands of the kids who need them the most. It could kind of be that first step of just like getting really stoked about, I actually can build something. I have this confidence, right? And then I think that dovetails so nicely into like a full on robotics program with FIRST. You should know that at FIRST from day one, we encourage all of our sponsors and all of the community to particularly go after the kids that might otherwise never have the opportunity to see how accessible, how much fun they can have with technology. We share a vision and we should be a continuation from where they start with you and the 800 million eyeballs a month and end up as part of the greater uh, FIRST community. I love it. All right, well, my goal then is to win that award again, 10 years down the road. I'm gonna earn it, all right? If within 10 years we are in more than 90% of the schools in the United States, I will personally deliver that clock back to you. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. <laughs> Thank you.
This season, FIRST and LEGO Education challenge students ages 4 to 16 from more than 100 countries to explore the role STEM plays in the arts during FIRST LEGO League Masterpiece. This week at FIRST Championship, we had 200 teams competing and presenting across FIRST LEGO League Explore and FIRST LEGO League Challenge divisions. With high fives and admiration, let's check out the highlights. During the first Tech Challenge season, Center Stage, presented by RTX, more than 7,900 teams of middle and high school students learned about the connections between STEM, the arts, and design. Here in Houston, we had 224 teams put their robots to the test in thrilling head-to-head -head challenges. Let's take a look at the first Tech Challenge action that took place this week. And now, let's get back to the playoffs. Congrats to Mark. He certainly has deserved the Founders Award because he is making it loud. We'll see if he's back in 10 years to put his name on that trophy one more time. But now, it's time for another First Impact Award finalist. Let's watch the video from Team 2486, the Coconuts from Flagstaff, Arizona. It's hard to get up on stage and be expected to crescendo. It's hard to have a spotlight on you when you're trying something completely new. It's hard to try and hit an even higher note than you've already hit. Some days, it's just hard. I can do hard things. I can do hard things. There you go, Nahir. Now let's go and get here. We can do hard things! The mission of the Coconuts has always been to bring STEM and FIRST to rural northern Arizona. This mission is Hard. There is very little access, enthusiasm, or opportunity in STEM in our region, especially on the Diné Navajo Reservation. But every day, we are doing the hard things to make a change. Our Diné people are the future fair is designed to close the distance between the students on the reservation and STEM experience and introduce the students to indigenous role models. Starting robotics teams on the reservation is hard. Most schools lack dedicated champions to lead programs. This year, we're partnered with Navajo Transitional Energy Company to start 12 rookie first tech challenge teams in reservation schools. We trained the coaches, supported them through the whole season, and ran the first ever all indigenous first tournament at Diné College. We call this program Resbotics. Meanwhile, in Flagstaff, our Damien Lo Puedo Hacer Steam Fair brought 20 organizations to our high needs, diverse community school. These students finally had the chance to say, I could do STEM too. 
Running First Tech Challenge for the whole state of Arizona at the same time preparing for our FRC season is hard. But we are dedicated to providing anyone in the state of Arizona the chance to participate in FIRST. That means running two tournaments at the same time on the same day. Running a huge kickoff and workshops. Or sponsoring nine FTC teams with our Coconuts registration grant this season alone. After traveling to the National Advocacy Conference in Washington, D.C., we organized ACK, the Arizona Advocacy Conference. In a state where education is a hot topic, it's hard to imagine presenting to our legislators. But when first teams from around the state converged on the Capitol, the payoff was state funding for two FRC teams in Northern Arizona. Staying dedicated to our mission despite the challenges of the distance funding resources and doing something brand new is hard. But it's all worth it to see a child light up when playing with the robot. It's all worth it to receive funding for Northern Arizona First Teams. It's worth it when our dedication to reaching underrepresented youth changes lives. It's all worth it to see our alumni earn millions of dollars in scholarships. It's worth it to bring STEM to our community, our home, our family. So take a deep breath. We're on to the next hard thing. It's time to crescendo again, together. Well done, Coconuts. Well, we are now in round two. We're in the lower bracket, matches five and six. We're gonna send it to Mass, where we have Archimedes against Galileo. Welcome back to the Mass Field. We're gonna start things off. This is our lower bracket and our elimination round. On the uh, Red Alliance, we have our Archimedes champions. And on the Blue Alliance, we have our Galileo champions. With that, I think it's time to go meet our teams. We're gonna start off with this first team. It is our Alliance captains. They are coming all the way to us from Australia. Let's hear it for team 4613. From Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, it's the Barker Redbacks. And joining them on this Alliance, we have them coming from Texas, your home state. Let's hear it for Team 4206. From Fort Worth, Texas, it's the Robo Vikes. And rounding out this Red Alliance, our final team. That's right, they're coming from California. Let's hear it for Team 1678. From Davis, California, it's the Citrus Circuits. And now over to Adam to meet our Blue Alliance. All right, here we go. We have our Galileo champions in blue. First up, these teams, this team, world champions in 2007, and they want to make 2024 the next one. Here they are. They have Lady Luck on their side. 987. From Las Vegas, Nevada, it's the High Rollers. In the center, this team. And I think everybody knew this weekend coming into the competition from Archimedes to Newton, they hadn't lost. During the qualification tournament, just won. And now they're here in the lower bracket. They are hungry for their first world championship and they do not want to go out right here, right now. It's team 2056. From Stony Creek, Ontario, Canada, it's OP Robotics. And finishing this entire international alliance, Joining us from the great nation of Israel, give it up for 1577. From Ra Anana, Israel, it's Steampunk. As Brittany said, this is an elimination match. This is do or die here in the Einstein playoffs. If you are supporting our Red Alliance, our Archimedes champions, let me hear you make some noise. If you are supporting Galileo, let me hear you make some noise. Well, here we go. Drivers behind the lines, please. In three, two, one, crescendo. Match two has begun. Blue Alliance quickly adding three notes into their speaker. Over on red, they nabbed some notes from the center of the field. They've been able to score four so far. 4206 adding one. Their partner, Barker Redbacks, adding another. The Red Alliance coming out of auto with a 10-point lead over Galileo. Galileo 
Mario shifting into high gear with the high rollers adding one, two notes into their amp and getting ready for amplification of the Blue Alliance speaker. They've got it with another note and lining up to add a third note. Unfortunately, they're having issues with their intake. On the red side of the field, Citrus Circuits able to add many notes into the Red Alliance amplified speaker, even up against defense from Steampunk. The Red Alliance has two robots playing passing. That's going to be Robo Vikes and 5613. The 5613 comes to join Citrus Circuits when the Red Alliance speaker is amplified. Like right now, Citrus Circuits adding in another note, helping to take the lead over Blue. Archimedes is now up 88 to Galileo's 55, 60 now with a minute and 15 on the clock. 1577 Steampunk passing notes over to the high rollers and also toggling between playing defense on the Citrus Circuits who just finished another amplification round for the Red Alliance. Over on Blue, they're amplified as well. OP Robotics shooting and making a note into the speaker along with the high rollers helping Galileo earn some points but not quite enough yet to catch up with Archimedes. 45 seconds remaining. Both alliances running a double feeder strategy. Citrus Circuits is a wash in notes that their partners are passing over from the Red Alliance source. 35 seconds remaining. Galileo is going to need to take advantage of this amplification period. High Roller scored one five-point note. They're grabbing another. They made that one too. 1577 missing a shot, but their partner High Rollers made another one. Archimedes is up by around 40 points as we enter into our end game. 15 seconds left. Citrus Circuits making a few more shots into their amplified speaker. Their partner Robo Vikes lining up to get on stage for red, they're up. Three, two, one. really set them apart during that match. They are going to continue in the lower bracket. We'll see them again during round three at match number 10. Unfortunately for the Blue Alliance, this is the end of the road for them. Let's give a big round of applause for our Blue Galileo Alliance with a great showing here on Einstein. Awesome match here on Mass, but we're ready for the next one over on Energy. Thank you so much, Rachel. Welcome back to the Energy Field. Right now, we have two different alliances. We have Curie on red and Johnson on blue. So let's start meeting this team, starting by the, Cur the winners of the Curie divisions. Their alliance captains with just two blue banners made this season. They are 21 time winners with 60 years of experience. Let's say hello to team 2590. They're from Robbinsville, New Jersey, Nemesis. And accompanying them on this mission, these guys are not only the toughest, they got two blue banners just this season. They've got seven years of experience. Let's give it up for team 7028. From St. Michael, Minnesota, the Binary Battalion. And last but not least, they got five blue banners this season. They are eight time winners with 11 years of experience. Let's hear it for team 4476. From Kingston, Ontario, Canada, Waffles. And over with the blue side, we have the winners from the Johnson division. Let's hear it for team 5813. From Concord, New Hampshire, that's Morpheus. 
In the center, it's Team 1477. They're from Conroe, Texas. This Tex is a blast. Four. It's so much. And keep it going for Team 3061. From Naperville, Illinois, Husky Robotics. Behind the line, three, two, one, crescendo. Our sixth match of the Einstein playoffs, Johnson and Curie facing off, and it'll be starting with another fight for the middle notes. The Red Alliance getting the majority of them here in this case, and a tie on the scoreboard, now a majority of the points. And then back to a tie as Johnson fights back in the last literal second of autonomous. Drivers now take control for two minutes and 15. Blue Alliance all stampeding their way to the top left corner of the field where you'll find lots of notes waiting for them on the ground. Hot potato as Texas Torque tosses one away. Husky will eventually scoop it up near the Alliance wall and pass it up and over the Blue Alliance stage. And as per usual, Morpheus waiting in the corner for them to convert first into two amp scores worth two points total of Alliance score, which unlocks their amplified speaker, which is now lit up nice and blue to show them exactly where to score for five points apiece. Texas Torque comes in to help out as well, not just in the assists category. Red Alliance has a call and response for that one. We've got Waffles down here from Kingston, Ontario, scooping up notes into the amp and speaker for Red. Now they're gonna have to run an entire cycle back to the source for the Red Alliance after their Alliance partners got tangled up in some traffic earlier. Match is a complete tie with just over a minute left to play. There's Naperville's Husky Robotics, a pass downfield down to Morpheus. A note comes back over the opposite direction, getting tossed from the Red Alliance machine of Nemesis from New Jersey. There's that 2590 machine right to that white line in the center of the field. They'll pass towards that lit up speaker. Heavy hit coming in from behind. Husky Robotics is not going to let these notes just sink without a fight, although that is a pretty formidable offensive effort from Waffles. They just fire right over the top of Husky. And 3061 will go back to their offensive duties here for the Blue Alliance. 40 seconds left to play. Nine points separating your two alliances. There's another amplified speaker for Red. Waffles able to get one five-point note to fall before Huskies come back in for another bark and bite. This time stuck in the corner near the Red Alliance amp. They get free, toss a note underhand to the Alliance partners, Morpheus in the corner, while Texas Torque get ready for endgame now and prepare to take stage right for the Blue Alliance. Red Alliance working on last minute amplified speaker notes. Five, not 10, bounces back out from the binary battalion. Five seconds, double, triple spotlight, excuse me, for Blue and three parked Red Robots. In a match that close, accuracy by those human players may have swung it. We'll find out in just a few moments. This was a do or go home match. The results are in and they're separated by just one point. Staying alive, it'll be the Red Alliance. Curie takes home match number six here in the Einstein playoffs, 141 
to Johnson's 140. We'll see more of Curie in match nine in the lower bracket. And folks, we have one fawn send off for the Johnson Alliance. Let's hear it one last time for Blue there. Johnson, congrats on round two in the playoffs. And we'll now kick it to our field reporter, Grace. Hello, I am here with Jeevan from Team Nemesis. They just won a match by one point. Jeevan, tell us a little bit more about your role on the team and how you contributed to that crazy match. Okay, so uh, I'm the software lead on Nemesis. I'm also the operator of the team. So uh, yeah, that match was quite fun. Really crazy, it was a great fight between the two teams. Um, yeah, the other Alliance did a great job. I'm really proud of them. And I'm so happy that we were able to pull off with the win. That was incredible. And your alliance is no stranger to, you know, just flying by the seat of your pants here. You guys fought your way through the lower bracket on your division. Tell us a little bit more about how the strategy shifted over that process. So honestly, we just kind of kept what we were doing. We, um, the match that we lost, we kind of saw that uh, there was some other issues, but we decided to stick true to what we know. Uh, we did great the first match in the Olympics. Even though our second match wasn't that great, we just decided to keep on, keep on going, stay consistent, and that served us well. And we're here now, so yeah. Okay, and how are you going to change things up or keep them the same for your next match we have so far? I think we're probably going to keep it the same, just keep on uh, rolling along. Uh, yeah, uh, our alliance is great, we work really well together, and I think we're going to do great things. So. Thank you so much for rushing over here, answering my questions. Let's hand it back over to Mass to meet our teams. All right, thank you, Grace. Here we are, back in the upper bracket on Mass. We have our Newton champions in red, our Hopper champions in blue, both undefeated still in this tournament. So let's meet them once again. First over here. Let's head to the beach, Team 294. From Redondo Beach, California, it's Beach City Robotics. In the center square, give it up for Team 1323. From Madera, California, it's Madtown Robotics. And the captain that wants to make it happen, 254. From San Jose, California, it's the Cheesy Poofs. Take it away, Brittany. Thank you very much, Adam. I know you guys are super pumped to meet this Blue Alliance. We're gonna start right here with Team 4481. From Eindhoven, Nord-Brabant, the Netherlands, it's Team Rembrandt. And now we're gonna join us in this middle spot right here, joining them. Let's hear it for Team 9072. From Hanover, Maryland, it's the Tiger Bots. And our final team, our Let's hear it for Team 6328. From Littleton, Massachusetts, it's Mechanical Advantage. making three notes into their speaker right out of the gate. Unfortunately, on red, Cheesy Poofs missed one of their shots, but Madtown Robotics made one to make up for it. Over on blue, they've been able to earn eight notes during that autonomous period, giving them a 10-point lead over Newton as we move into Teleop. The Red Alliance is jumping into action. Cheesy Poofs adding a note into the amp, even up against some defense from Tigerbots on the Blue Alliance. Cheesy Poofs getting the Red Alliance speaker ready for amplification, and they added a note in, quickly trying to pick up a second. That second note is amplified. They got a pass from Madtown Robotics, who's feeding them notes over from the Red Alliance source. 
1323 adding another note over to the amp but there were some blue alliance robots fending for trying to grab those notes out of the center of the field mechanical advantage made the first note that blue needed in order to amplify their speaker unfortunately there were not any other blue alliance robots ready to take advantage of that amplified speaker the blue alliance has fallen now they're down by eight points with a minute and 15 seconds left in this match cheesy poops lighting up the speaker with amplification they are lining up and made another shot for red that's going to be two more points for red meanwhile their partners beach city robotics trying to slow down mechanical advantage as they try to get access to the blue alliance source to pass notes over to 4481 4481 just finished an amplification period for the blue alliance helping them keep up pace with red but with 45 seconds remaining blue's going to have to shift things into high gear in order to overtake the newton alliance cheesy poops scoring a five pointer note for red over on blue the rembrandts doing the same for hopper 30 seconds remaining and these teams are continuing to focus on the speakers as we get ready for our end game 90 72 passing some notes over to the rembrandts who have amplified the blue speaker shooting up and making one note into the speaker 63 28 trying to do the same over 10 seconds remaining mad town is lining up they've got a note in the red trap their partners climbing two for match number seven. It's a close one going to red. Winning by three points. Newton takes the W. 130 to Hoppers. 127. That stage performance at the end really made a difference for Newton, who's going to be facing off against Curie in their next match in the upper bracket. We'll see those two divisions face off during round four, match number 11. Even with that great showing, Hopper is now moving down to the lower bracket. We'll see them compete again in round three, match number nine. Incredible performance by our winning Newton Alliance. Can't wait to see the next match back over on Energy. What an amazing match, Dan. What an amazing match. Thin, non-stop awesomeness all around. But right now, we need to meet the teams that will be taking part in match number eight. Starting over on our Red Alliance, we got the Milstein winners. Over on this first spot with, blue, with four blue banners this season. This is Team 78. From Newport, Rhode Island, Airstrike. And accompanying them, they are a 23-year team with nine-time winning. It is Team 604. From San Jose, California, Quicksilver. And this last spot on Mills team goes to an incredible rookie team. They got three blue banners in just their first season. They are 94, 83. From Besiktas, Turkey, the Istanbul Wildcats. And over on the Blue Alliance, we have the teams from Daily, starting with Team 1690. From Benjamina Israel, Orbit. 
Team 4522. From Sedalia, Missouri, Team Scream. And Team 321. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they're the Robo Lancers. Drivers behind the line. Butch, Icky, Beth, Crescendo. Einstein, playoffs match number eight here back in the upper bracket on the energy field gets underway. Some cross line traffic here as Orbit for the Blue Alliance rapidly runs to the notes in midfield and they'll even take them from the buffer zone between the white line and the red line on the left side of the field to tie that game up at 31 points before drivers now take control and all six of our machines take flight. Bit of a standoff stare down in midfield. 78-321 there, the Airstrike Robo Lancers dance begins. Both of them seemingly assigned to a defensive operation here in this match, and they had to figure out which side each was going to take. They both end up on the top of the field for a while, and a traffic jam ensues north of the red stage. Those cycle times that we've seen in some of the past matches from these alliances might take a nosedive with the heavy defense shown in this match. Airstrike for Red Alliance wants to grab a hold of the note they just got from the human players, top right of the field. They'll dance around the Robo Lancers and find open air on their way to the amp in the bottom left now, scooping up the one point for the Red Alliance score. But more importantly, they've unlocked the ability to amplify the speaker, which would match what the Blue Alliance was just able to do over on the right side of the field there. Daly now up by 12 points with a minute and 15 to play. Orbit for Blue scoops up a note from their loading zone. They're joined immediately after by Scream and two notes. Say hello to our video screens outside the field there after a high velocity. Gentle miss of the Red Line speaker. It was amplified. The rookie on that side, Istanbul, was Wildcats. Do pick up five points in that amplified cycle, bringing the Milstein score up to 60. They still trail by a little bit behind Daly. Daly finding their bearings here, waiting for that amplified speaker. And now we might see the Robo Lancers jump in. No, we'll actually have another dance with Airstrike and prevent Airstrike from making it quickly over to their source. 30 seconds left in the match. A little over 20 points separate your two alliances. Orbit over to the amp for the Blue Alliance. They just unlocked one more amplification for this Blue Alliance, and it looks like they're poised to act on it. We enter our end game period now. Orbit races down the field. Robo Lancers still on the defense, trying to block the pass from Airstrike. And in our last seven seconds, robots begin to take the stage. Up we go. Team Scream up for three. Make that four. And the trap remix good for five more. A solid end game showing there on the Blue Alliance. Red Alliance with some robots up on stage at the end as well, and we'll tally everything up for you and get a score as soon as we can. Match eight is in the books. Your scores have been certified. Up on the big throw, you'll see the Blue Alliance win this one with a score 105 to 71. That is the daily division taking a win over Milstein there to stay in the upper bracket.
We'll see more of them. Round four, match 11 in a little while. And the Red Alliance will advance to match 10 where they'll go on to face Archimedes in the lower bracket. Hi, I'm here with Yona from Team 321 who just played in the last match. Now tell me a little bit about the defensive strategy that your team ran during that match. So our amazing alliance, we know they can hold up the points in our game, so our goal is to cut the other team's points in half, which is like, we're obviously doing it well, you know. It's been pretty incredible. We've seen a lot of alliances doing the feed across strategy. Is that something you've found you're able to shut down that or more of like the cross country style? Feeding is like extremely important in the alliances. So that's what we're aiming to shut down because if they don't have any notes, they don't have any points, so. Sounds like a great strategy to me. All right, let's head back to the desk here and meet a few more teams. Thanks, Grace. No notes, no points. That's pretty straightforward. All right, that's the end of round two. And um, maybe we talked about no penalties a little too soon. Yeah, uh, definitely in two matches we saw both on Curry versus Johnson and Newton versus Hopper, penalties making the difference. And obviously playing that counter feeding strategy in that particular case, you know, you get too close to that source zone, you're gonna get hit with, with a foul and that's what made the difference in those two matches. And the long toss strategy, the coast to coast, that evolved over the course of the season. We didn't see that very early in the season. Yeah, towards the end of the season, we got to see more and more of that played out, particularly throughout all the divisions here. And we see it being played here. What's interesting now, it's like where they're actually firing from, because if there's a lot of defense being played, they're actually shooting into the mid zone. Dangerous area to actually shoot into the mid zone. Easy for other, the opposing alliance to actually take those notes. Yeah, well, we've made it through two rounds. We've lost a couple alliances, but we're moving on. Before we uh, get to the next matches, let's hear from our first impact finalist, number three, that is Team 6429, the fourth dimension from Izmir, Turkey. To create a melody, one must begin with its notes. Eight years ago, fourth dimension found its melody and started its unique journey. In order to spread the harmony of first, our team has become the first melody in the Asian region. Welcome to the source of our melody. In Sense of Science, we removed barriers and made science accessible to all, enabling us to reach 61,000 people with our videos. We visited disadvantaged areas to teach how to use Spike Prime, EV3, and We Do Kids to 1,700 students. Cooperating with a kindergarten, we organized STEAM Explorers, which introduced 100 kids to STEAM. We provided 150 hands-on STEAM kits that we created from CNC machines, including QR codes to our digital science booklets, which we haven't printed out for a greener world. Our magazine, Impact, aims to inspire readers and instills a desire to work in various fields by featuring the inspirational works of people. Inspiring the youth at their early age with STEAM is essential. To achieve this objective, we organized for the exhibit an art competition under the team of Designing Robots with 75 young competitors. In our United Dimensions project, we aided disadvantaged regions, partnering with the United Nations. With sign language, we made sure that the hearing impaired community are not behind by the first values. Years only work when together. We inspired youngsters by gathering them with experts from various fields with our project Experts for Youth. As part of Welcome First, we conducted seminars to 2,800 kids in order to educate them about first values. We translated first documents into Turkish and published them on our website, eliminating the language barriers. We have spread the word of first we educating 30 students in three different teams on FLL. Can you hear the notes coming together to form our melody? One note alone cannot form a melody, just as our teams personally work when together motto implies. We want to be a part of our melody. Everybody here, everybody here. 
Let's get into it. Get started. Get started. Get started. Get started. Get started. Get started. There's a lot of excitement on the playing field, but there's a lot of excitement in the stands, too, for a free T-shirt. I think we've got some more, so hang in there. All right, let's check out the bracket after our two rounds. We're moving into round three, and we're in the lower bracket. We've got match nine and match 10 coming up, which means you need to win to stay in the tournament. So let's send it over right now. Still setting up on mass. So let's talk about the next round. What do we who we got here? We've got Milstein and Archimedes in match 10, and Hopper and Curie in match nine. Yeah, both of these teams, uh, particularly when we when we look at uh, Milstein versus Archimedes, you know, Archimedes, just that firepower that we have from 1678, playing the front lane and, and the front zone area. And when left alone, they're just going to be able to take it all the way home. And so uh, we see the counterfeiting strategy, but that's necessarily not necessarily working. So when left alone, there's going to have to be some level of defense played here. Yeah, I mean, they've got our high scores so far with 108. 80 points, yeah. and only, I think, 10 of those were penalty points, so you're scoring 170, without defense, you, you know, you're in trouble. Yeah. And on the other side with match number nine with uh, Hopper versus Curry, again, uh, just Hopper, high scores across the, across the board, and able to 
do the double feeding strategy. They do it so well, and they're able to cross the field just without, just move around any defense that has been played against them. So we'll see how Curry adapts to it. Uh, sure to be exciting the matches. Well, they're ready, so let's toss it over to the mass field. Welcome back to the mass field. We are on match number nine in our lower bracket. This is an elimination uh, elimination match, so both alliances are looking for a win. We're gonna start off with at the red alliance, we have our Hopper, and on the blue alliance, we have our Kiri. Now with that, let's go meet our teams. We're gonna start right here with this first team. We have our Alliance captains right here. Let's hear it for team 6328. From Littleton, Massachusetts, it's Mechanical Advantage. And joining them, I want you guys to help me welcome our next team, 9072. From Hanover, Maryland, it's the Tiger Bots. And rounding things out for us, our final team on this Red Alliance. Let's make some noise for Team 4481. From Eindhoven in the Netherlands, it's Team Rembrandt. And Adam, let's head over to you for this Blue Alliance. All right, thank you very much, Brittany. We come on over to the Blue Alliance. Now, let me tell you, they were number eight in their division, but they came back. Everybody loves the Cinderella story, and they don't want it to end here. First up, I hope you're hungry, because they are 4476. From Kingston, Ontario, Canada, it's Waffle. In the center, joining them, 7028. Representing St. Michael, Minnesota, it's the Binary Battalion. And completing this alliance from Robbinsville, New Jersey, 2590. Give it up for as Brittany said, this is an elimination match. We have a green light and a thumbs up here on mass. Drivers behind the lines, please. In three, two, one, crescendo. <laughs> Match nine has begun with the Blue Alliance scoring two notes into their speaker. Nemesis lining up for another, and unfortunately their partner, Waffles, missing one of their shots. Over on red, 90-72, adding another note to the Red Alliance tally. They scored six notes during that autonomous period, giving Hopper a 10-point lead over Curie as we move into Teleop. Waffles trying to grab a note from the Blue Alliance wing while their partners Nemesis and Binary Battalion are picking up notes from the Blue Alliance source zone and passing them over with Curie's signature double feeder strategy. On the red side of the field, 63-28 mechanical advantage, passing notes over to 4481, the Rembrandts, who have amplified the Red Alliance speaker, making another note worth five points and with a follow-up shot from mechanical advantage. That amplification period is going to help Hopper take the lead now. With a minute and a half left, Hopper is up by 12 points over Curie. Fury trying to catch up. They're ready for amplification. Waffles lighting up the Blue Alliance speaker with one, two. They're gonna go for three notes into their speaker. Missed that last one, but got another right before the amplification period ends for Curie. 90-72 playing defense up against the Blue Alliance and also passing notes over to their partner in the red amp zone, 44-81. One minute remaining and only one point now separating these teams as Curie has taken the lead. They added one more amplified note from Binary Battalion while Red answered with an amplification period of their own, taking the lead back from Curie in a tight matchup here in match number nine. 40 seconds remaining. Waffles getting the blue speaker ready for amplification yet again. They're lining up with the shot and got just missed it actually from the subwoofer on the Blue Alliance. Their partner though, 7098, adding in another note. Waffles also adding another one. Red is now amplified too, taking the lead of two points with only 
only 15 seconds remaining. It is neck and neck. Anyone's game to stay in the playoffs for Einstein. 10 seconds remaining. 63-28 trying to get lined up for a climb. They are lifting up with a trap shooter and just missing it as time runs out. Got a winner for match number nine. It's the Red Alliance taking the win with 125 to Curie's 119. The Hopper Alliance moving on in the lower bracket. They will continue on in round four, match number 12, with a great performance during match number nine. Unfortunately for the Curie Alliance, this is the end of their Einstein journey. Let's give a huge, huge, huge round of applause for our four Curie teams who had a great showing here on Einstein. After an exhilarating match number nine, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen in match 10 back over on energy. Here we are, round three, match 10. Let's go ahead and see which teams we have on the field. Starting right by the Red Alliance, we're once again meeting the Milstein winners. On this first spot, they brought the Robert Munchkin for the win. Give it up for team 78. From Newport, Rhode Island, Airstrike. And accompanying them on this adventure once more. They are fabulous. They are here in black and yellow. It is team 604. From San Jose, California, Quicksilver. And this last spot goes to a team that comes from very far and wide with just three blue banners in their rookie year. It is team 9483. From Istanbul, Turkey, the Istanbul Wildcats. With the blue alliance, we have the team from Archimedes. Let's hear it for team 1678. From Davis, California, Citrus Circuits. Team 4206. They're from Fort Worth, Texas, Robo Vikes. And team 4613. From Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, Barker Redbacks.
crescendo. Archimedes, Milstein, duping it out for a chance to play against Hopper in match 12, right back here on the energy field in a little while. The autonomous period definitely leaning towards the Red Alliance favor with lots of notes scored in the upper speaker, seven of them to be exact. Blue Alliance ending up matching it, 41 point tie across both alliances and drivers will now take the controls. There's the red back getting the first amp note for the Blue Alliance in that tiny little 4613 machine. They'll race back to the source for the Blue Alliance. Pause in midfield to let Quicksilver pass their note forward for red, avoid the defense and zip their way around. So much for avoiding the defense. Airstrike flies on in to say hello. They bump into the red backs, kind of a double collision there after Robo Vikes go for a slight jab. Score was tied at 58. Milstein jumps ahead by just a tiny little bit here as the rookies from Istanbul are cleaning up near the Red Alliance amp. Two stack lights, good. They're ready to amplify their speaker on moment's notice. A two-pointer sinks very quickly for Red, followed up now by a five-pointer from the Wildcats. And they will absolutely clean up the notes that have been passed forward. Red Alliance stepping on the gas and putting it in high gear really quickly here. 80 points on the board, Archimedes sees the speed limit sign changed and they're going to speed up as well. There's Citrus Circuits by the Blue Alliance speaker. One, two, three. The solo show 15 points so far on this amp cycle. Let's make it four. They've still got time on the clock. They'll just go over to the amp at this point and prep the next one. Two stack lights already ready to go and they're just writing their own book at this point. A minute left to play. Both alliances in triple digit scores. 24 notes scored so far on red across the amp and speaker. There's Quicksilver, 604, to deliver some more. Note picked up for one point in the amp. They've got another one ready. That speaker is ready to amplify as the Blue Alliance machines now head through the source and dance under the Red Alliance stage, passing forward to Citrus Circuits. Lemon Juice Battery is fully charged over there for them, and they've got the pile of five notes sitting there waiting for future use and 148 points on the board so far to show for it. There's the riff. Final 20 seconds of this match. It is an elimination match, so this end game is going to be crucial, though the Blue Alliance up quite a bit. 10 seconds left. Up we go, two Blue Alliance robots in harmony. Eight points total across stage right for Blue. Citrus wanting to join and get the trap note. Two seconds to do it. Trap note not able to detach from the robot. And three Red Alliance robots back at sea level at the conclusion of that match. We'll be right back with your scores from match 10. Results are in for Einstein Playoffs match number 10 with one of the highest scores we've seen in the world this season. Blue Alliance, 192 points to 153. Archimedes will stay in it. 
they will proceed to lower bracket. Match number 12 right back here on Energy in a couple matches. Folks, one last round of applause for Milstein, your Red Alliance. Eliminated here after three rounds of play. Back to you, Blair and Renee, up to the sports desk. Wow. Absolutely just wow. We were just treated to some amazing matches. 192 points, only 10 of those were penalties. So that is obviously the new high score. And no one seems to be able to shut Archimedes down. We said it right before the break, right? So right before we saw these matches, 152 speaker points to 132. Anywhere else in any other playoff, uh, 132 would get you the win. But 152, just amazing. And so close. Like, it was neck and neck. And then just they just pulled away sort of the last quarter of that match. And previously, Hopper took the win with a close match, 125 to 119. So what'd you see over in Mass? Yeah, it was close back and forth. And again, it's that double feeding strategy that we've been seeing being played throughout these matches, particularly in uh, these last two matches that we've had. And uh, now what we've seen, particularly in the Hopper versus Curry, 63-28 just pulls away. Blue Alliance, absolutely excellent job by that alliance. Let's check out the bracket after our three rounds. So. We are getting there. We are in the round four in just a bit. But before that, we've got a few things to take care of. And the first one is to present the Volunteer of the Year Award. Please welcome Amy Lynn Hunt and Colin Fultz. Hi. It's my pleasure to help recognize this year's first Volunteer of the Year Award. Every year, we recognize outstanding volunteers from each program who have had a significant impact on their first community. Our award recipients all receive a pin, a program trophy, and a customized Volunteer of the Year jacket. Well, and of course, bragging rights. So if you see someone around wearing a Volunteer of the Year jacket, please join us and help thank them for their many contributions to FIRST. So, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Colin to help us recognize the first Robotics Competition Volunteer of the Year Award winner. Thank you, Amy Lynn. We've said it before, and I will say it again, first runs on volunteers. Can I please have a round of applause for the thousands of volunteers who make our events happen around the world every year? The 2024 FIRST Robotics Competition Volunteer of the Year is a FIRST alum who has been volunteering with FIRST for more than 15 years. They serve on the planning committee for events in their region and have served as a field resetter, inspector, scorekeeper, pit admin supervisor, game announcer, pit announcer, judge, field assembly, FTAA, and FTA. As one of our two chief field supervisors since 2019, he helps create and deliver training for field supervisors, lead cures, and FTAAs. His feedback helps ensure that teams have a more consistent and positive experience across all events and emphasizes the health of the participants and the volunteers around him. To quote one of the many people who nominated him for this award, his selflessness and determination to improve the program is second to none. Congratulations to the 2024 First Robotics Competition Volunteer of the Year, Scott Gehring. April is Volunteer Month, recognizing the importance of volunteer service within our communities, schools, and organizations. Whether you volunteer to mentor teams or bring events to life, 
Your dedication and passion is critical for empowering the upcoming generation of innovators and leaders. Thank you to all FIRST volunteers who annually give 28 million hours of service to our organization. Next, we want to recognize the winners of the Dean's List Award. This award celebrates outstanding student leaders whose passion for attaining FIRST ideals is exemplary. Please join me in congratulating these students. Emily Kurashima, Team 1425, Team Waffles. Graydon Gentry, Team 5115, Escape Velocity. Ryan Hallahan, Team 16461, Infinite Turtles. Ramsey McClure, Team 18145, Men in Blackjacks. Emily Daniels, Team 18984, The Hurricanes. Hannah Rehard, Team 14295, Operation TAC. Quentin Norris, Team 21594, Pearson Odyssey. Justin Jin, Team 16458, Techno Wizards. Arish Prabhan from 12791, Iterative Intentions. Sophia Lander, Team 4537. Max Du, Team 4421. Alicia Ali, Team 4414, High Tide. Elizabeth Seaton, Team 6413, Degrees of Freedom. Noah Wren, Team 2202. Camila Ortega, Team 9124, The Bolt. Ella Meyer, Team 7531, Servo Strike Back. Edna Connes, Team 4931, Edwardsville Technologies. Sarah Milligan, Team 1188, The Ravens. Darius Debiaggi, Team 9642, INT Robotics. Akash Krishna, Team 4131, The Iron Patriots. FIRST alumni are proof of the impact of FIRST, and there are many alumni mentors and volunteers who help move our mission forward. Thank you for your continued involvement and support. Also, congratulations to students who are graduating this year. You're alumni now. Mark your calendars for first signing day on May 20th, when we'll recognize and celebrate the next steps of first participants as they become first alumni. You can participate in first signing day by sharing your congratulations or words of guidance for the class of 2024 on social media. Qualcomm is a FIRST strategic partner and longtime supporter of FIRST, and this year they returned as season presenting sponsor of the FIRST in Show season to inspire FIRST participants to use their curiosity, creativity, and artistry to design and build a world of endless possibilities. I am pleased to announce that Qualcomm will once again be returning as season presenting sponsor for the 2024-2025 season. Without further ado, let's turn it over to Cisco Sanchez, Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer at Qualcomm Incorporated for the big reveal. Hello, FIRST community. Congratulations to all of you on your accomplishments. You continue to inspire us at Qualcomm. When you work together to solve problems, make waves with your innovations, and transform into competent leaders, you remind us that the future of breakthrough technology needs you. At Qualcomm Technologies, beneath the surface of bold innovations and powerful solutions are passionate, curious, creative problem solvers just like you, using their STEM skills to explore the possibilities for a better future. We're proud to partner with FIRST for another exciting season. Let's look at how you'll make a splash next year. A vast, unexplored frontier, teeming with mystery, possibility, and fish? Welcome aboard, explorers, we're diving in. The ocean is more than what you can see on the horizon. Beneath the surface lies our planet's most complex ecosystems, full of life and potential for exploration and learning. With this season of FIRST, we're exploring beneath the surface and uncovering the potential in each of us to strengthen our community and innovate for a better world with healthy oceans. 
sonars and other marine technology allow us to gain more immersive knowledge of the ocean's greatest wonders, to explore the unknown and apply those learnings to improve life on land and below water. The ocean affects our weather, it provides food, it supports all living beings, and through great challenges, the strength of the ocean's biodiversity sustains it. Your adventure begins here with First Dive, presented by Qualcomm. Water game confirmed. You can't wait. All right, but you're gonna have to wait until next January to get wet. We've got a few more first impact finalists, and now we wanna check in with team 2438, Lobotics from Honolulu, Hawaii. is our home, a gathering place where people from different cultures live and work together. This has taught us the importance of being both mirrors and windows, seeing our similarities and differences as strengths in our shared progress. And whether our roots run deep or just break ground, we know that we have a kuleana, a responsibility to care for this place and its people. Our project, Eola Na Opio, The Youth Shall Thrive, embodies our commitment to empowering Hawaii's keiki. We work within our Hawaiian language schools to design place-based robotics programs so STEAM learning resonates on a deeply personal level. What, what you guys are doing here with us, I'm super excited about, like to see the excitement in the kids doing the Legos and playing on the iPads and like creating the stop motion things like they're super excited. There's a fire in their eyes that we don't see every day because we don't use technology like this every day. Building up our communities at home has inspired us to find allies near and far who face similar challenges. Two worlds come together and collaborate and meet and say, you know, this, this is where, where a world experience and game changer type mentality can kick in. We work together to dismantle barriers to entry in robotics, engineering, and science. Moving at the speed of trust, we invite everyone to have a seat at the table of innovation. And what we found is that the true blessing is not in what we give, but in who we become by giving. When we help someone achieve what they once thought was impossible, we know we are living our mission. It's really changed my whole paradigm and perspective on, on learning in general, I think. Um, we learn to not only be able to like fill our brains, but to also fill, fill almost our soul, fill our soul with information about one another. And so I think that's been a really cool experience. <laughs> Take all the knowledge you can get, use it, use it, apply it, so that when you move on, when you get to the next step, it always carries on. And as long as we are able, we will continue to reach across divides, breaking barriers, pushing boundaries, united in our hope for the future, of one world working together until we all win. All right, we are back. Congratulations to Iobotics. But we are now going to a field where there are two undefeated alliances. We've got Newton and Daly, and what's special about this match? In particular, we said it earlier on, defense wins championships. But now we see defense versus defense. 321, excellent defender. 294, the same. What happens when two defense bots go against each other? We're about to find out. We are going to find out. Let's send it to Mass for this match. All right, thank you, Blair and Renee. 
This is the last match in the upper bracket. We have our Newton champions in red. We have our daily champions in blue. Both still undefeated in this tournament, but that is about to change right now. So let's meet our Red Alliance. Come with me over here to this team. Celebrating 25 years, Team 294. From Redondo Beach, California, it's Beach City's Robotics. In the center square here in the Red Alliance, five consecutive Einstein appearances, Team 1323. From Madera, California, it's Mad Town Robotics. And they are California Dreamin' 254. From San Jose, California, it's the Cheesy Poofs. All right, Brittany, let's meet our daily champs. Thank you very much, Adam. As we head over to this Blue Alliance, we're going to meet the daily team. We're going to start off with our Alliance captains. Let's get loud for Team 1690. From Benyamina, Israel, it's Orbit. And joining them, second on this Alliance, it is time to hear you scream. It's Team 4522. From Sedalia, Missouri, it's Team Scream. And rounding out this alliance, our final team. Let's get loud and let's make some noise for Team 321. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's the Robo Lancers. All right, both of these teams have played, all of these teams have had some awesome games so far. But with that, we're still looking for our winner. Let's hear it for our Red Alliance. Our Blue Alliance. All right, captains and teams, I got the thumbs up. So drivers behind those lines in three, two, one, crescendo. Match 11 has begun with 321 adding in a note for the Blue Alliance over on red. We've got Mad Town Robotics making in a note along with their partners, the Cheesy Poofs. They each added in another one before Autonomous ended. These two alliances coming out neck in neck after Autonomous. Newton does have a slight advantage. Cheesy Poops trying to extend that, picking up notes that their partners, Madtown Robotics, are shooting over from the source. Unfortunately for Madtown, 321, the Robo Lancers are putting some pressure while the Robo Lancers just had their partner finish up an amplification period for Blue. Daly is down by six point with a minute and 45 remaining in this match. 45-22, getting ready for another round of amplification with their partner 1690 Orbit, making in an amplified note worth five points for the Blue Alliance. Orbit coming back with another one. They've got it for Blue, while 45-22, Team Scream scores a note into the amp for the Blue Alliance, which has helped Daly take the lead now with a minute and 15 seconds remaining. Red is amplified and pushing around the defense. 1690 trying to slow down the Red Alliance. And while they are occupying Beach City Robotics, they weren't able to slow down the Cheesy Poofs, who scored multiple amplified notes during that amplification period. 55 seconds and only six points separating these two alliances. We're seeing a lot more defense in this match with 321 trying to slow down Madtown and even Cheesy Poofs trying to cross the field to go and get a source note for themselves. Daily now with the lead, 35 seconds remaining. Orbit coming back to dump a note into the amp with their partner team Scream right behind them, adding another. The Blue Alliance amp is ear speaker is now ready for amplification with 1690 forcing Cheesy Poops to miss a shot that could have gone into the red amplified speaker. 20 seconds remaining. Blue is maintaining their lead. Orbit lining up for another shot. Cheesy Poops trying to get on stage for 
red. They got the trap for the Newton Alliance with five seconds remaining. Their partners trying to join them on stage. Two, one. have our results for match number 11. The Red Alliance taking the win, 97 to 91 here on Mass. The Newton Alliance really clinched that win from their end game stage performance. That's going to move the Newton Alliance to our finals for Einstein. Even with a great showing, the Daily Alliance is unfortunately now moving to the lower bracket, but they are not done yet. We'll see them again in match number 13 during round five. A huge win from our Newton Alliance here during match number 11. Let's see what match number 12 has in store for us over on Energy. And we're back here on the energy field to do match 12 right here. We're about to introduce teams. We're still having Archimedes against Hopper. So why don't we get right on with introducing and meeting all the teams once again. On this first spot, they are a 20-year team with... They are a 9-year team with 13-time 13 13-time 13 winners. They are the 40, team 46-13. From Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, that's the Barker Redbacks. Accompanying them on this alliance. Just this season, they got two blue banners. Bring it up for team 4206. From Fort Worth, Texas, Robo Vikes. And the last spot on this match, this team is turning 20 years old just this season. But they are 40-time winners. Give it up for Team 1678. They're from Davis, California, Citrus Circuits. And over with the Blue Alliance, we have the teams from Hopper, starting with Team 4481. From Eindhoven in the Netherlands, Team Rembrandt. Team 9072. They're from Hanover, Maryland, Tigerbots. And make it loud for Team 6328. They're from Littleton, Massachusetts, Mechanical Advantage. Winning will get you a spot to play against Daly in match number 13 coming up next. And the loser gets sent home. 26 points on the board for Archimedes and counting two more speaker notes scored right at the end of Autonomous will bring them up to 36. Hopper, one speaker note ahead of them and Drivers will now take control one last time for one of these alliances. 
Blue Alliance up and over the stage with their first note of the match. That's Mechanical Advantage taking the pass position there and then stolen by the Barker Redbacks for the Red Alliance. This is not going to be a cookie cutter match, says this Red Alliance. Citrus Circuits now for Red. The 1678 machine drops off the one-pointer in the amp for them while Barker goes and retrieves a note from their own human players this time to bring across and send over their stage towards Citrus. The Blue Alliance is sending the Tiger Bots over to the source. Zigzag pattern under the Red Alliance stage to pass down to the Alliance partners, Rembrandt. Rembrandt out of the Netherlands. They're in the corner of this field, looking for the second amp note they need to amplify their speakers. They look to close up a 13-point deficit right now here for the Blue Alliance side. Five seconds left of amplification. Rembrandt finally able to get a five-pointer to sink. In comes the Alliance partners to help out as well. Mechanical advantage helping on that 15-point amplification cycle for blue, but they still trail by 14 with a minute and five left to play. Piles of notes sit in front of the Citrus Circuits machine and they amplify their speaker to try and convert some of them, but juggling problems in front of their driver's station as they can't quite grab a hold of the notes quick enough and they'll only pick up two during that amplification period, allowing Hopper a brief window to try and catch up. Rembrandt's unfortunately also dropping a note in front of their amp, although getting quickly back up on their feet to launch some speaker notes and amplify them as well. 34 seconds left to play here in match number 12. Archimedes leads for a little while. Still piles of notes in front of the Citrus machine. Barker comes in to help the case just for a brief moment to launch a speaker note up for a two points of Alliance score and drag some more notes actually out of the Blue Alliance source in this instance. 15 seconds left. So far, not much interest in taking the stage. It's all coming down to Robot score at the speaker with notes. Citrus will be the first robot interested in climbing up onto the stage. Four points after they get spot lit by the human players, but still no dice on the trap note they attempted. Their alliance partners, Parker, also up for three on their own side of the stage. And on the blue alliance side, Rembrandt's the only robot that decides to go airborne for three points there, a blue score. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, they can start coming and they don't stop coming. I do the rules and I hit the ground running. It makes sense not to live for fun. Match 12, scores have been certified. Advancing on to match 13 for a chance to play against Family Fresh in the finals. The Red Alliance, Archimedes, with 178 points to Hopper's 155. Archimedes moves on to match 13, folks. One last round of applause for our Hopper Alliance. Eliminated here after four rounds. Lara and Renee, we're gonna send it back to you. Hi, I'm here with Corinne from Team 4613, and if you've been watching them on the field, you might see that their robot is tiny but fast. So Corinne, tell me about how you arrived at that robot design strategically. So basically, we designed this robot to be fast and light and have a billet chassis so that we'd be able to have fast cycles at the beginning of the match, and then progressively throughout the season, it's just been getting better and better at playing the game. That's so exciting, a billet chassis, that's very unique. All right, I'm gonna toss it right back to Blair at the desk and review that last match. Thanks, Grace. Good job. Wow, some exciting matches. Unfortunately, everybody can't stay in the tournament, but we're seeing maybe a little bit more defense interrupting things, what do you see? Yeah, two very different matches. This last match with uh, uh, Archimedes and Hopper, high scoring matches, 149 speaker points to 130, basically a full on shootout. But very different on the other side, Newton versus Daly, only six point difference. Yeah, you've got a little replay. 
Let's do a little instant replay here and look at some of the defense that was played. Yeah, yeah. So thanks to our friends over at RSN here, we're going to pay attention over to just this area over here. 321, look at that defense just holding back 1323 the entire time, rolling together and holding them back. Here they go for another attempt. And again, 321, just holding them back. What does that force 254 to do? No notes over in this area. So 254 now needs to make their run back and forth. Absolutely interrupted them throughout the entire match, forcing 254 to actually go back and forth throughout the match. If we go ahead all the way to the end of the match here, we'll see what those what, what the score comes in the last 15 seconds. Here's what's happening. Look at Newton, 64 to 86. What's the difference at the end of the match? Well, here it comes. We got the trap uh, and also uh, the stage points. 14 total stage points making the difference, making the difference between this deficit of 88 to 74 ending in that match. But what was the difference? 10 point penalty. Yeah, another penalty. Well, we've got more matches. We have one more match in the lower bracket and that will determine our second finalist. But before we get there, we are gonna tee up one more First Impact Finalist Award video. It's Team 5985, Project Bucephalus from Wollongong, New South Wales, Australia. You saw through me all this time. I'd forgotten people were kind. I was hurting and you knew, yet you made me believe I could break through. I found my talent, you let it shine. Suddenly my future was redefined. Before I knew it, my fears were erased. To my surprise, I found my place. Firm ground beneath the people that care. To the world around me, I now declare. I'm ready now. Sparks fly from the grinder and shavings fall from the mill. My grip is steady as I wield the drill. With a mind certain of what my hands will create, I'm equipped for the future where opportunities await. I will face triumph and disaster with my feet on the ground as I inspire others and make them feel proud. Amongst these tools is where I belong. Oh, it suits me to feel strong. I'm a builder, creator, and dreamer by day. I lead, encourage, and pave the way. I'm ready now. Looking out from this place, there's a community to be embraced. Something so much bigger than I first thought. We form alliances of mutual support. Shared workspace and resources offered you around. Teams of all kinds created and housed. Across land and oceans, this music is heard. Sun and snow forming the concert. Joined by new singers who eagerly rehearse, I join the choir that spans the earth. I'm ready now. In the eyes of a child, I lit their first spark, and I learned a new way to make a mark. I discovered my power to teach and inspire. Now every week, hundreds of faces reflect that fire. I take opportunity to where the students are, to bush and beach, city and farm. I teach those who didn't have a chance. We smash the barriers so STEM can advance. Every day of the week, our classes roam wide. I'm both student and teacher, bridging the divide. I'm ready now. The crowd swirls around me, their cheers shake the walls. Robots and humans in a dance that enthralls. I see creations built from what we taught. Hundreds of teams here we support. We are the strength that grows first on our coast. We mentor, encourage, fund and host. Communities transformed as opportunities arise. I make a difference, life changing before my eyes. I'm a referee, judge, volunteer and MC. I fill rooms with my energy. I'm ready now. I see so many who slip through the gaps, the damaged and overlooked, opportunities taken from their grasp. I can't fix the world, no matter how far I reach, but I can change stories as I listen and teach. The promise of hope invokes powerful change. Together we make choices that rewrite each page. It's not robots or competitions, banners or awards. This is what we're here for, our task and reward. This power we found belongs to us all. This is why we stand and issue our call. You're ready now. Fans, please direct your attention to our entertainment stage where these lucky contestants will test their Simon Says skills during our high intensity <laughs> Simon Says challenge. Now, please welcome from White Plains, New York, the master of Simon Says, Steve Max. Oh, yeah. First Robotics, how we doing? 
All right. Listen, I know that when I play Simon Says, we only bring down like 40, 50 people, and everyone up there is champing at the bit to play a little Simon Says themselves. So should we do that? Should we play with the fans in the stands? Yeah. All right, you guys relax. So my friends over here, Simon Says, everyone, please stand up. Everyone on this side. Here we go. Simon Says, hands up. Simon says wave, Simon says stop, hands down. Simon says have a seat, give yourselves a nice big round of applause, yeah. Yeah, look at these guys. Everyone over here, please stand up, yeah. You are terrible. All right, here we go. I don't know how they did it, but the good folks at First Robotics have found the best Simon Says player in the history of robotics, the, the, the universe. We have two teams. By a round of applause, who do you think's going to win? Simon Says, will it be someone on the red team of here? Or will it be someone on the blue team? Simon says, high five! High five! Here's how this works. We are going to eliminate everyone on the red team down to one. We're going to eliminate everyone on the blue team down to one. Last two people are going to meet center stage for the big says off. It's a game with only one rule, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's see how these brilliant robotics kids do. You guys, relax, pay attention. Red team, here we go. Hands up, hands up, and you're no good. <laughs> Simon, Simon says hands up, Simon says hands down. Faster, hands up, hands up, everyone saw. Simon says hands on head. Simon says tap the head. Simon says stop, hands up. Oh. Simon, they're dropping like flies. Simon says hands up, wave it around, you're out. Simon says wave, Simon says stop, hands down, hands down. You're out, you're out. Yeah, you're out. Yeah. Simon says hands down. Everyone come a little bit closer, please. Am I that good or are they that bad? Here we go. Simon says move down. Simon says move down. Simon says stop. If you're still standing and you're still in it, you must be pretty good, so here we go. Simon says up, Simon says down. Simon says up, Simon says down. Simon says up, Simon says down. Simon says run. Simon says stop, hands up. Simon says put up your right hand. Does he realize he had a 50-50 chance and he blew it? <laughs> Here we go. Simon says wave it around. Simon says stop, left hand up, both hands up. Simon says both, you're out, you're still waving. Simon says both hands up. Wave it around, wave it around. Simon says wave, Simon says wave. Simon says stop, hands down. Hands down, you're out. Yeah. You see how you, two hands up here, two hands up here, guess what? Simon says hands down. Simon says face each other. Look at those guys getting paid. Here we go. Simon says come closer. Simon says stop. Simon says give each other the traditional first robotics double high five. Nice. Simon says hands down. Face me, please. Face me. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Look at you. Wibby, why is it? Wibby. Wibby! Here we go, blue team. Here we go. Here we go, blue team. Here we go. Blue team, hands up. You're killing me. 
Yeah, look at that. Taking the walk of shame. Yeah. Look at that. There he goes. Summit is up, summit is down, summit is up, summit is down, summit is run, summit is stop. Hands up. Simon says, hands up. Hands down, hands down. No, no, no. Simon says, move down. Simon says, move down. Our hands are still up, my friend. Our hands are still up. Simon says, hands down. Nicely done. Give yourselves a great big round of applause. Nice. Simon says, give yourselves a nice round of applause. Simon says, stop. Hands up. Hands up. You're out. You're out. You're out. Yeah. You're out. Yeah. Here we go. Simon says, move down. Simon says, stop. Simon says, put up your left hand. Wave it around. Wave it around. You're out. You're out, you're out. I didn't say Simon says wave it around. Yeah. All right. YB will be right there. My little. Here we go. Simon says hands down. Here we go. Woo. Simon says run. Simon says stop. Hands up. Simon says hands up. Hands down. You're out. Simon says hands down. Faster. Hands up. Simon says hands up. Simon says lean forward. Stand up straight. Simon says hands up. Simon says stand up. Simon says hands down. Simon says face each other. Simon says give each other the traditional first robotics chest bump. <laughs> nice. Nice. Beautiful. I didn't even realize there was a first robotics traditional chest bump. Nice job. Face me, please. Face me. Face me. Face me. Face me. <laughs> Face me, face me, face me, seriously, face me. I won't call you out. Face me, face me, face me, face me, and face me, face me. Nice. 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 Simon says, face me. And here we go, supersonic, Simon says. Summit is up, summit is down, summit is nose, summit is belly, summit is nose, summit is belly, summit is nose, summit is belly, summit is nose, summit is belly. You're not touching your nose. <laughs> Touch your nose, man. Summit is nose, summit is tap the nose, summit is stop, hands up. Go. Emilio! YB! YB, Emilio, there's only one way to settle this. Simon says, dance on! Oh. Oh. Emilio, nice. YB. Hello. <laughs> but listen, maybe you're not the best dancer in the world, but you know what you are? You both represented very well today at the first robotics in the art of says. And I'm in such a good mood here with these smart, coolest kids in the world. You are both, you are both Simon Says champions. Steve Max, how do you follow that? Well, there's only one way. We play our final First Impact Award video. Simon Says Roll, Tech for Kids, Team 3990 from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Simon Says Roll it. We are Tech for Kids. Fueled by innovation, sustainability, and education, we are committed to foster a vibrant robotics community while engaging parents and mentors in our evolving journey. 
Les jeunes de Tech for Kids sont super curieux et passionnés. C'est donc super stimulant en tant que parents et mentors de les encourager dans leur développement du leadership et du travail d'équipe, en plus des compétences STEM encouragées par FIRST. We're among the few teams worldwide providing a curriculum integrated robotics program for high schoolers. As a new element this year, students from 9th grade are now part of Team 9406 Tech Junior. It is, in some way, an introductory team to FRC where members will get to explore all aspects of the competition. Our commitment to diversity and inclusivity remains unwavering, achieving a 50% female enrollment in our 7th and 8th grade robotics classes and providing over $15,000 in financial aid highlight our commitment to making STEM genuinely accessible to all. Moreover, we are doing everything to promote STEM. Students participated in multiple TV interviews and advertisements such as Salut Bonjour, Saint Genie, and VMO, publicizing FIRST Robotics in Quebec. We also organized a fundraiser for Saint Justin, offering comfort and hope to those spending Christmas in the hospital. With this year's theme, we are promoting STEAM in collaboration with two artists, Benz and Sandy Alou. My mission is to bring a touch artistic. La robotique, c'est comme l'art. C'est une façon d'innover et de laisser aller sa créativité. La technologie et l'art, c'est une combinaison gagnante. J'ai l'opportunité de capturer tout le processus à travers la vidéo. Et honnêtement, je suis impressionnée par leur engagement, le fait que c'est eux-mêmes qui construisent leur robot avec l'encadrement des mentors. Vraiment, 3990, c'est incroyable. First faced challenges in finding locations for the Quebec regional event this year due to unexpected incidents. Faced with a potential event cancellation, our school was approached and in line with our core value of mutual aid, we decided to step in and host the competition. This year, our journey is a testament to the transformative power of STEAM, collaboration, community engagement, and a commitment to inclusivity. From the past to the future. From prototypes to robots, we create, change, adjust, and evolve. That's who we are. Take for kids. We've given out some more free t-shirts here with our show squad, but we've got a match going on pretty soon over there on Mass in the lower bracket, and it's Archimedes versus Daly. This is a tough one. Yeah, it's going to be defense versus offense, and we saw 321 excellent defense in that last match, although got to be careful with those penalties, so we'll see how they handle it here in this final round five of the lower bracket. 
And this is um, winner moves on into the finals, finals and the loser goes home. So it's a tough one. So let's send it over to Mass where the field is ready. And we are back on Mass. We are on qualification, not qualification. We are on our match number 13 on our lower bracket. This is elimination. The winning team will go on to our finals. We have Daily on the Red Alliance, and we have Archimedes on the Blue Alliance. Are you guys ready to meet the teams? Let's head on over to the Red Alliance. All right, joining us in this first spot, they are the 2023 Hall of Fame team. They have Lobster Lobster. We have three, three, two, one. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's the Robo Lancers. And joining them on this next spot, on this Red Alliance, I want to hear you scream. We have Team 4522. From Sedalia, Missouri, it's Team Scream. And last, but certainly not least, rounding out our Red Alliance, we have our Alliance captains, their third appearance on Einstein. Let's hear it for Team 1690! From Benyamina, Israel, it's Orbit! All right, Adam, it's over to you to meet this Blue Alliance now. All right. Over here, we have your Archimedes champs, but that's not good enough for them. They want to be what? World champs. And here we go, meeting this first team. It's prime time, lime time, 1678. From Davis, California, it's the Citrus Circuits. In the center square, joining them, give it up for team 4206. Hailing from Fort Worth, Texas, it's the Robo Vikes. And representing their country from down under, make some noise for 4613. From Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, it's Barker Redbacks. We have a green light down here on mass. This is for a spot to play for the world championship. Drivers behind the lines, please. In three, two, one, crescendo. Match 13 is off Blue Alliance, making it an early note with a long shot by 46-13, and another making it in for the Archimedes Alliance. Over on red, though, they're making quick work of their notes, flooding the Red Alliance speaker with nine notes during that autonomous period. With two minutes and 15 seconds in teleop, these teams don't have a lot of time to determine who's moving on to the finals. 1690 adding two notes to the Red Alliance amp. Meanwhile, their partner 321 putting some defensive pressure on the Blue Alliance passers. Red Alliance has their speaker amplified. 1690 shooting over a note into their amp zone and going to line up and make an amplified note for the Daily Division Alliance. Blue is also amplified with the Citrus Circuits making a shot, but then having to contend with 1690, who just stole a note from underneath the Blue Alliance speaker that could have been used in their speaker. A minute and 25 remaining. Daily is up by nine points. 46-13 passing over notes to Citrus Circuits, while 4206, their partner Robo Vikes, trying to put some pressure on the Robo Lancers. A minute and 10 remaining Citrus Circuits adding in another amplified note for Blue. Their partner 4613 just missing a shot. A minute left and Archimedes is only up by three points. 4613 racing across the field to pass a note over to their partners. Meanwhile on red, 4522 Team Scream coming over to join Orbit and adding a note into their amplified speaker. Orbit scoring another, and that's gonna put Daly in the lead with 35 seconds remaining. 
Daily has pulled ahead. Orbit coming back across the field to add a note into the Red Alliance amp. Blue trying to keep up the pace with 46-13 passing a note over to the Citrus Circuits, even up against defense from 321. 20 seconds remaining. Daily is up, but Citrus Circuits are spotlit and get in a trap note. The Blue Alliance human player making the second high note. Blue's gonna try and harmonize. Daily Robot also up with a trap note on Blue. We've got one spotlit robot as well, right as time runs out. This match is going to determine who's going to be joining Newton in the finals. And we do have a winner. It's the Red Alliance taking the win, 129 to 109. Daly's going to the finals with an incredible performance here, thanks to their great speaker shots. Daly's going to be moving on to face off against Newton. We'll see them again in the first finals match. Unfortunately for the Archimedes teams, this is the end of their Einstein journey. Let's give a huge round of applause for our four Archimedes teams who represented their division very, very well. And another big congratulations to our four winning daily teams. Well, hello, I am here with Jan from 1690 Orbit on the Winning Alliance and one of your finalists here on Einstein. Jan, I hear you worked on the software of your robot. It's got such a unique package, such a low profile. Tell me about the challenges that helped you uh, write that software to enable your success. Well, we put a lot of work into our vision and into our localization, which helped us a lot. And we also, into our game pieces to skip and not on. And it just, we put a lot of work and it's just so fun. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you so much for telling us about it. We're so excited. We're going to hand it back to Blair at the desk to break down that last match. Thank you, Grace. Offense versus defense. And what's the outcome? Defense wins championships. <laughs> Three, three, two, one. Just, uh, just threw a wrench into their whole strategy. Absolute MVPs of the match, particularly just to see how 321 changed the way that the, the uh, Archimedes Alliance had to play. All of them had to start cycling and just try to get by that 321 defense. This time, they're a little bit safer about it. Only one tech foul there on, on that on that side of the field. Tech files over on the other side as well, but 321, just amazing defense against that Blue Alliance. You've got to earn your way all across that lower bracket, and um, Archimedes came up just a little bit short. Well, we know who's in the finals. It's Newton versus Daly. They need a little time to set up, so it's time now for a few words from first founder Dean Kamen. Greetings. So, it's not a coincidence that I wanted to talk to you before the final round. And it's not because you're going to run away after. It's to re-emphasize the fact that we're not here about finding out which robot wins. We're here to make sure all the students win. And I think from what you've seen so far, it's pretty clear we're doing a pretty good job. Okay. Normally, I use a little of this time 
to remind all the students that they have to do something that we've always done by tradition, which is thank all the sponsors, all the mentors, all et cetera, et cetera. But we've seen that, that done, so people have learned. And I'm glad that that tradition is now taken hold without me having to remind everybody. But there's something I do also every year for the last 35 years. I give out the homework. I'm here to tell you today, this year, you're going to get two different homework assignments. Get over it. I think you'll find both of them a lot of fun. But I'll put them in context for you. The first one ought to be really fun. As you all probably know, a few years ago, I started a sister organization to FIRST called FIRST Global. Why did we do that? Well, even five or six years ago when we did that, it seemed apparent to me that the kind of culture, cooperation, just the whole energy that you see from kids that get together at first in this country needs to happen in every country. And almost more importantly, it has to happen between countries. You'd have to be numb these days not to see how many countries need to get along better. And by the way, I'll take a quick note to say that I know that there's, there's particularly these days countries that are not getting along well, and some of them have teams here. And I want to thank every one of those teams here for being over and above in gracious professionalism and support and tolerance for each other. You are fantastic. Adults and leaders around the world could learn a lot from FIRST. And that's why we established FIRST Global. Now, FIRST Global operates like the Olympics. No matter how big a country is, they only get to send one team to our event once a year. We finished it last year in Singapore, after doing it in Geneva in Europe, Right before that, we did it in the Middle East, in Dubai, before that in Mexico City, and the first time in the US. Well, the reason we set it up was after about 25 years of running FIRST, we were in about 50 countries because so many of our big partners and sponsors are already international and global, and they were spreading it grassroots. But after 25 years, being in 50 countries would sound pretty good, until you realize there's almost 200 countries in the world, and that meant there were about 150 where the kids didn't get to do what you're doing. So I said, okay, let's just plant a seed in each of those other 150 countries. We'll ask them just to participate with one team where we'll all get together in some country and we'll move the country around each year. And even I, the optimist that I am, know that no one team in a country could affect the culture of that country the way all our countries need it. But I figured by planting the seed in all these new countries, they would develop more and more teams, finally their own regionals, their own championships, and there'd be places like this all over the world. Well, it sort of worked. There are a number of those countries that we started five, six years ago, Mexico, Dubai. There's a number of those countries, you can check the FIRST Global website, that now have gone from one team, having never participated before, to hundreds of teams. Some of those countries have their winning teams in this room today. So that's great. but I'm never satisfied. So, we just announced last week in Washington that this coming year, at the end of this year, September 26, 
through September 29th, we're going to do the 2024 first global event, and we will have one team from every country in the world. We have already more than 190 countries committed, but many of them are struggling, of course. All 54 countries in Africa, some are struggling. Countries all over the world, in the Middle East, in Central America, in South America, in the island Pacific. So it occurred to me that with the thousands and thousands of teams that we have here, and knowing that FIRST has a culture of inclusion and gracious professionalism, I figured I would give the first homework assignment that every one of the teams here has to go look at the FIRST Global website and pick a country that you're willing to help, cheer for them, give them technical support. They may need financial support. They may need other kinds of support. But with all the teams around the world that are here, that are experts at what FIRST is, I think it would be enlightening, it would be fun, and it would be really valuable to help accelerate the growth of a global network of FIRST if each country, each of those nearly 200 countries in the next month or two, hears from at least one team that says, we're here to help, support you, root for you. By the way, the event will very appropriately be in a stadium where the original Olympics was held in Athens, Greece. 65,000 seat stadium. I officially invite every one of you to be there. So please remember, first piece of homework, maybe you visited a country, maybe your parents or grandparents came from a particular country that you love, but go look and figure out how to team up with a whole new opportunity for networking and friendship, and let, let your team support one of the countries that will be represented there, because you realize the whole point of FIRST Global is to start in every country what we're doing here. So you need to help them each grow. I really believe that this sport in your lifetime will become the truly universal, dominant, global sport. And you're gonna help us do that this year. My second piece, my second piece of homework. It turns out that we took a little bit of a hit in our growth during COVID, but we're back. Yeah, yeah. And we're up to about 4,000 FIRST robotics teams, FRC teams. About twice that many FIRST Tech Challenge teams and loads and loads and loads of FIRST Lego League teams. But we were at a board meeting just yesterday talking about growth, and the entire team of FIRST pointed out, and I agree with them, they got a lot on their hands. They're supporting all of our events, over 180 regionals, this championship. They're, they're supporting all three levels of our competitions. There's about 200 of them. And I was looking for really big growth. As you know, I'm never satisfied. And I looked at the kind of growth that they were forecasting, and I think they were very responsible, like any now big organization that's been around for 35 years and they could project what I would have called modest growth. And I think they're probably right. And if we were a typical organization, that's where it should end. But we are not a typical organization.
And it occurred to me that even if every one of those 200 people, the whole staff of FIRST, if they could do nothing else, but each one of them could commit to bring one new team next year, we would go from about 4,000 teams to about 4,200 teams. Well, that's not good enough. So it occurred to me, I always gave homework that would try to grow us quickly. And it worked. We went from 23 teams in year one to 4,000 teams. Most people besides me would say, this is pretty good. But I would give you all homework like bring the press, because that'll expand our reach. And you've done that. Get us on TV, and you've done that. Get your political leaders, and you've done that. I even gave you homework many years to let's get a United States silver dollar with first on it, with a teacher on it, and that took about 20 years. But the Krista McAuliffe commemorative silver dollar was minted in 2022. You even did that after everybody told me it's impossible to do. And this is the only United States coin ever minted that has a teacher and has the name of a private organization like FIRST on it. It's fantastic. But that brings me to this year's real homework. I can't ask the overworked, underloved little staff at first to add, let's say, 4,000 teams next year. But I could look at all of you and say, you've got a lot of people on your team. You've got mentors, teachers, corporate sponsors, community leaders. And who has the biggest vested interest in making first the most universal, ubiquitous sport in the world? Well, the first community will be the biggest winner. So you have a reason to, to grow this thing, unless you're not thinking first is useful. So what I thought the homework is, is very simple. I'm asking this year not to get you to get other people to help us. No longer ask your governor, ask your senator, ask the media. No. When I was a kid and I really wanted to get something done, my father told me, Dean, if you really want to get something done, do it yourself. So I'm asking every team here, and I don't think it's a big ask, between now and January, when we kick off the next season, every one of you has got to show up, of course, again with your team, but a team from a school in your neighborhood. A, figure out how you can bring me at least one more new FIRST Robotics team. I want to have 8,000 teams next year, and I want them all to be brought in by you. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you some help and some incentive. Over the last year or two, some incredible work has been done to make a really beautiful little robot. Kind of a kit, kind of you print most of it. It's got a really powerful Raspberry Pi processor on it. It's got some really neat stuff in it. And because of support of people like Raspberry Pi, because of my engineers at DECA, because WPI helped write curriculum for it, because, well, lots of people bought into my vision of, let's make a robot, a powerful robot, that could be put out for about the price of a textbook. Well, I went to our governor in the little state of New Hampshire, and, yeah. And I said to the governor what I've been saying to governors 
for 35 years. And I, every time I meet a governor, I challenge them and say, you know, education isn't a federal thing, really. It's a state thing. You ought to, you ought to have all the governors compete in a fun way to see who can have the highest per capita number of teams in your state. By the way, for a number of years, the state that's been ahead is Michigan. Yeah. But I'd been saying for years, for all the co governors I've known, get into a competition. Let's see what what's, will be the first state to make first available in every school, just like you do other sports. And again, 30 years ago, they'd roll their eyes. Now a lot of them would think, yeah, that, that's possible. Well, last year, after he saw this kit, our governor said, Dean, now that you've made that, and by the way, you can program it in LabVIEW, in C++, in Python, in Java, any of the code you're putting in your big robots, you can put it in this little tool. But our governor looked at it and said, Dean, now that you have that, I'm not going to commit to put a first team in every school in the state of New Hampshire. I'm going to commit to put one of those robots in every classroom in New Hampshire. And he did it. And I asked him to go challenge all the other governors to do the same thing. It's a lot more powerful, educational, interesting, cost-effective than an old-fashioned textbook. Anyway, we're now making them. There'll be about over 6,000 of them in New Hampshire pretty soon. But here's my offer to all of you. For any one of you, starting today, that sends into FIRST, and I'll ask the folks at FIRST, I don't know how they do it, their web, you know, that's their problem. I'm not a, you know, they got a bureaucracy with 200 people, they'll figure it out. You guys call whoever you'd normally call at FIRST, and you commit that you've got a new team, they're going to need to start early, coming up to speed. They're going to need a cute little robot that's very powerful, that's really easy to program. So as soon as you show up with a bona fide new FRC team, I will personally deliver to you as a gift one of these robots. Then I will also give you a second one so that you can give it to that new school and you can help them by being their mentor to get them up to speed over the next six, seven months so that both you and that new team will be ready in January for the 2025 kickoff. So, to be clear, everybody, FIRST needs to grow. And it needs to grow at a much higher rate than a typical company would grow. The world is in desperate need of people that know how to solve problems, that know how to communicate, cooperate, respect each other. Things that are so powerfully part of the culture of FIRST need to be much louder in the world. And the 4,000 schools that we have are fantastic, but we need 40,000 or 400,000. It's really not unreasonable to believe that if we do things right, as you people go through your college and career, the impact of the network of FIRST could have a material effect, not just on your life and your career, but on the whole progress of this human experiment we're in. You people really can be an example to the rest of the world. And if we can include thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, of kids in the current generation, your generation, and they can become part of the first community, you will literally change the future. So please, I hope it's challenging. I hope it's fun. 
I hope I hand out 8,000 of these robots in the next few months. But please, do the homework, get in touch with the first folks, and let them know you've brought us at least one new team. And if you can bring us more than one, I'll have some special prizes for you. Get to work. First Robotics, please give a warm welcome to the best drum line in the NFL, Deep Steel Thunder.
Simon says, sit down. We've got some matches to get to. We are finally in the finals on Einstein, and this is exciting. We have Newton versus Daly, and they've played before. Ten point difference, penalty points. So it came out ahead. It's close. This is probably a great time to give a shout out to some, some well, this game was modeled after two games that were submitted in the 2021 season, and both teams that submitted those games made it to the playoffs on Einstein. 1678, Citrus Circus on Archimedes. They were part of the genesis of this game. And 3601, Husky Robotics on Johnson. So thank you for your game submissions because you're seeing it play out and it's beautiful. All right, Daly, Newton, you ready? I'm ready. Are they ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's send it to the field. Down on energy. Houston, Texas. Welcome to the Einstein Final. <laughs> this is it. The electricity is palpable in this room, and I cannot wait to introduce these teams. We have our Newton champs from the upper bracket in red. We have our daily champs from the lower bracket in blue. Once again, we are gonna introduce them to you. Sam, please take it away and introduce our Newton champs. Starting off with our Alliance captain, let's give a very warm and loud welcome to team 254. The 26-year team out of San Jose, California, the Cheesy Poofs. And joining them on the field, let's also welcome their first pick. It is team 1323. In their 21st season out of Madeira, California, Mad Town Robotics. Let's also welcome their second pick. It is team 294. The 26 year team from Redondo Beach, California, Beach Cities Robotics. And let's also welcome their incredible third pick. It is team 1189. The 22 year team from Gross Point, Michigan, the Gearheads. Make some noise for your Newton champions. All right. So now we've met one alliance. We come over to number two. Here we are. First up, the captain that wants to make it happen for Daly. Give it up for 1690. The 20-year team from Benyamina, Israel, Orbit. Joining them in the center square. Let me hear you make some noise, Houston, for 45-22. The 12-year team from Sedalia, Missouri, Team Scream. And completing this alliance. Already completing this alliance on the field. Already Hall of Fame. But you know what sounds even better? Hall of Fame and world champions. It's Team 321. In their 26th season out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Robo Lancers. And completing this daily alliance. Make some noise for 94-32. The rookies out of Anthem, Arizona. Team 8-Bit. All right. In the spirit of gracious professionalism, cooperation, and teamwork and community here at First Robotics, I would like both alliances to come together, greet each other, wish each other the best of luck in a handshake, and let's cheer them on. Come together, teams. Let's go!
I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night. A feeling. I got a feeling. Finals here on Einstein 2024 crescendo presented by Haas. Newton in red took the undefeated streak across the upper bracket. Blue daily battling back from the lower bracket for the rematch here in the finals. Autonomous control comes to an end. Newton takes the 10 point lead here going into driver control. 254 cheesy poofs at the amp here first. Running out of ammunition, they'll head back with their alliance partners, Mad Town, switching places, trying to get around the defense of the Robo Lancers. Now catching him underneath the bumper. Mad Town pinned in the corner by the Robo Lancers. They back off before the fouls come in. And 1323 breaks free. Blue Alliance, Red Alliance, both amplified at the same time. Orbit pinned up against that subwoofer. Time ticking down here. And Red Alliance will end theirs and reset at the amp 58 to 49 with just over a minute and a half left in play. Back to collect. Blue Alliance looking for one more note here. There's Orbit from Israel. They get the second they need and ready to amplify. Up and in for Team Scream, the five point score. Orbit making it 10 for the Blue Daily Alliance. Here comes Red, a well timed hit from the Orbit machine and the Cheesy Poofs lodge the note up into the speaker. 66 to 60, just over one minute left in play. There's the team from San Jose getting it done. The blue team, 254, up and in. 1619, try, trying to get another hit in, but the cheesy poofs managed to dodge and head back to collect. 75 to 68. Blue Alliance ready to amplify, and they do. One, two from the screen machine out of Sedalia. Getting it done here. 321, lying in wait and perhaps motionless on the far side of the field. A 3v2 here, advantage red. Trying to bring it back here in 3 2 1. Springs back to life with 30 seconds left in play. Cheesy Poofs ready to amplify. Looking skyward. Up and in for the five point score. 45 22. Being routed by the 294 machine. Beach Cities slowing down the Daily Alliance. It's close. 15 seconds in the end game. 87 to 85. Red with the advantage, but here comes the Blue Alliance. Team Scream. Trap stage right. 
Cheesy Poofs trap stage right, three seconds in play, and time expires. are official here in finals match number one. The advantage goes to the Blue Alliance. Daly takes it 119 to 99. Daly going up one match here in the world finals. Well, we are here with one of the members of the Blue Winning Alliance. This is Charlotte from Team 9432 8-Bit. And yes, you heard that right. This is a rookie team in the finals here on Einstein. I bet it's been an insane day so far. Tell us a little bit about how your day's gone from alliance selection to division playoffs to now being on the biggest stage in FRC. It's honestly so unbelievable. I can't believe what's happening. Um, alliance selection was amazing. I was like so crazy. We got the we got an amazing alliance, and I'm so grateful. Um, three, two, one has killer defense. Um, it's insane. We're like whoa. And then everybody else is just amazing at scoring auto. It's it's amazing. It's so cool. That's amazing. I'm so happy you guys have had a great experience here. And I know you guys have maybe been off the field for a couple of matches as well, but I'm sure you're still supporting your alliance. Would you be willing to tell us a little bit about how you are helping out your alliance make it here to the finals? Yeah, for sure. So we're mostly helping out with pit crew stuff and getting waters and helping get tools and stuff and just making sure that the teams that are going on the field have everything that they need. Awesome. Well, water is huge. Make sure you're staying hydrated. We're going to hand it off now, and we'll see you back on the field here in just a few minutes. Please welcome first alum and member of the first board, Melissa Smith. The, fir the first impact award is the most prestigious award at first. It honors the team that best represents a model for other teams to emulate and best embodies the purpose and goals of FIRST. The FIRST Impact Award is presented to the team judged to have the most significant measurable impact of its partnership among its participants and community over a sustained period, not just a single build season. The winner is able to demonstrate progress towards FIRST's mission of transforming our culture. The recipient team will be invited to the 2025 FIRST Championship and is now a member of the FIRST Hall of Fame. Imagine a world where innovation is the melody and this team is the conductor, leading the charge with rhythm and flair. They've turned up the heat on STEM advocacy, blazing a trail from remote communities to the halls of Capitol Hill. This team doesn't just play to the crowd, they lead the band, conducting entire FIRST programs and hitting all the high notes of inspiration. Additionally, they're spreading the love to rookie teams, providing the support and guidance needed to thrive. They sure are silly. It must be the heat. Go nuts for coconuts. Congratulations, team number 2486, coconuts.
Thank you.
please direct your attention to the entertainment stage as First Robotics is proud to present a very special show. They are fast becoming one of the most popular acts in sports. Please welcome all the way from the Philippines, the Spyro Bros.
We are just about set for finals match number two. Finals match number one, great one. Finally, a loss for Newton. Yeah. Little, little replay here. Yeah, so let's go to the replay, courtesy of our friends over at RSN. We know 321 is just MVP here, great defense. Yeah. But I wanted to draw a bit of attention here to 1690. So 1690 is here on the screen. Watch as they make this path up and around. 
around the field, although with the defense of 294. So I'll go ahead and hit play here, and there they go. Juking out 294, spin move. The problem is nobody else can see it except for us. Well, it's really awesome. 1690, excellent job of being able to maneuver around the defense of 294. And not only that, but able to pick up any nodes that are being sent over by either 1323 or 254. So major difference there. Obviously, 321, big, big, big uh, impact on that match. So let's think. Strategy change here, or we go do the same thing again? What would you do? Well, I, 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 they're going to have to adjust. Yes. Uh, it's not working, so we'll see how they adjust, and I'm sure they will. All right, the field is ready. Let's send it over to Einstein, finals match two. All right, we come back to Einstein. This is the Coachella of robotics on the main stage, the 2024 first championship. Blue Alliance are daily champs. They are up one to nothing in this contest right here, right now. Red Alliance needs two wins to come back and force the rubber match and get another world championship. Sam, I cannot wait. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready, Adam? Oh, I am so ready. How about you guys? Are you You're ready? ready? <laughs> then let's meet our teams once again. Here we have our Newton champions. A great being once said, do or do not, there is no try. I give Amongst all of these alliances and all these teams, they have nine world championships under their belt. Oddly enough, they've never been paired together to do it, and so they want to make number 10 all together amongst these three teams in California. So first up, let's make some noise for Team 294. Out of Redondo Beach, California, Beach City's Robotics. In the center square, make some noise for this amazing machine right here. Team 1323. It's Madtown Robotics out of Madeira, California. And completing this alliance. When I think first robotics competition, I think of this team. Give it up for the NASA Machine 254. Welcome the Cheesy Foods from San Jose, California. And heading over right here to our Blue Alliance, we've got our Dally champions. This first team is 90 years old, 17 time winners. Everyone looks to them about robot building. It is team 1690! From their hometown of Benyamina, Israel, Orbit. Helping them out to try to get this victory. This team is 11 years old, eight time winners. They're here to live it all on the field. Give it up for team 4522! Team Scream from Sedalia, Missouri. Dally, Dally, and this last spot on the field goes to a team that's, they are 10 time Impact Award winners. They're here to bring it all in the field with the Lobster Claws. It is Team 321. Welcome back the Robo Lancers from Philadelphia. to take it home right here, right now. Drivers behind the lines, counting with us, Houston, in, in three, three, two, one, crescendo! World Finals 2 here on the big stage. Daly battled back in the lower bracket to take the revenge match in match number one. Newton looking to equalize here. Starting off the scoring. Daly looking at a strong start, but Newton coming back in the final second of autonomous control. Daly and Newton tied at 41. Drivers take control. Cheesy Poofs in orbit, back to deliver first. And now the pile up at the red source as the Cheesy Poofs in Madtown looking to collect. Heading back across midfield here, 45-22, moving back across into position. Red Alliance and Blue Alliance ready to amplify. Red beats them to it, but not by much. Up and in for the five-point score. Here comes Team Scream out of Missouri. 
getting number two at Madtown, adding on to red. They will reset here as Orbit and 254 back at the amp, 69 to 54, just over a minute and a half in play. 13-23, running the full field cycles here. Switching places with the poofs. 294 playing the defense on the far side, as is 321, the Robo Lancers. Lights out defense, 321, trying to slow them down. Red Alliance amplification ends. Blue Alliance looking to restart here. Team Scream back to collect. 294 pushing 16-19 right outside the source zone. Backing up before the foul comes in. One minute to play. Newton with the advantage here. Red Alliance ready to amplify and mad down. Up and in. Five points. Here come the cheesy poofs for 10. 3-2-1 preventing any more scoring as Blue Alliance amplifies. 45 left in play. 97-84. Newton with the advantage here. Red Alliance. Dust settles, ready to amplify. They have the nine point lead. Orbit looking to deliver the second one they need. And red is amplified. Newton looking for more. Matt down in orbit, collide on the near side. Matt down trying to beat the buzzer with ease. They do up high, and the cheesy poofs can't get back in time. And they will head across the front side of the field. 13 seconds left. Newton with the lead. 109 to 96. Here comes Team Scream with a trap on stage right. Here come the cheesy poofs with a trap on stage right. Three seconds left. Two time expires in match number two.
Here's our official for finals match number two. It will go to the Blue Lions. Daily 123 to 120. Your new 2024 crescendo. championship the finals on the Einstein are always so delicious that was great what an end to just an exciting day of matches and just these Einstein finals amazing you can feel the energy in this crowd we have not disappointed we were not disappointed we hope you had a great championship and we'll see you again next year where we might get wet Thanks for a great week in Houston. A great season, everybody. Crescendo, presented by Haas, is closing the door here in Houston. Good night.